the most high. Oh, praise We're praise glad to be here on this beautiful day. Thanking y'all for the sun shining out and for uh, allowing us to come together to worship, to praise him, to hear his word, to renew our strength, to renew our faith, to lift his name on high. Blessed Hallelujah. be the name of the most high Yah. Hallelujah. 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 We uh, are going to talk about the reparations. Why the heathen owe us reparation? Do you think it's time yet? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Hallelujah. They owe us. And it's now coming out more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. We're going to read about how the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just and the righteous. We're going to read how God is going to recompense the heathen for all of the atrocities that they have done to us. We're going to show you some of their own words. And we're going to look at what the Most High has to say about that. We're going to look, of course, from a Hebraic perspective and a Hebraic understanding. So, we're going to get started with a prayer. Blessed art thou, your whole God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Yehoshua's name, we thank you. In Yehoshua's name, we lift you up on high. Blessed be thy name, Yehoshua HaMashiach. We will praise you, Father. In the good times, we will praise you. In the bad times, we will praise you. During sweetness and in bitterness, Father. At all times, we will praise Yah. Thank you, Most High, for this day. Thank you for the grace and the favor that you give. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Our Adonai, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer. The one who shall reconcile us back unto you, Father Yah. Because our sins have separated ourselves from you. He is the one, Father, who is the intercessor and the intermediator for our, our behalf. And we thank you. We ask, Most High, for you to redeem us from the hand of the adversary, from the hand of affliction and persecution. We pray, Father, that you would be our sword and our shield and that you would go to war against our adversaries. That you would go to war against the devil against his fallen angels, against the demonic spirits, against the heathen, against the workers of iniquity, and that you would separate the sheep from the goats, that you would separate the wheat from the tears, yes. that you would bless, Father, your saints with an abundance, most high, all that they need, spiritually, mentally, physically, and even financially as well, Father. Remember us as we remember you. Turn unto us as we turn unto you, Hallelujah. Most High. As we call upon your name, call our name. Hallelujah. 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 We just pray, Father, that you would uh, give us a good word and that it might heal and edify and restore and bless and encourage the people, Most High. We just thank you for all you give. In your mighty name we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forget those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. By Shem Yehoshua, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, we want to thank you guys for um, joining us, for spending your Shabbat with us out of all the places that you can choose. We're grateful to the Most High Yah that you chose to spend that time with us, and we're forever grateful, and we thank you, and we're praying for you diligently um, that the Most High blesses you with all of the very desires of your heart. Um, family, you can take time out now to um, show your support for the ministry. You can do that one of three ways. You can do that at Cash App at dollar sign Kayashua. You can also do that at Zelle at Kayashua at gmail.com or you can go over to the website Kayashua.com forward slash tithes and offerings. Click on the yellow donate button and you can do whatever the Ruach leads you to do, um, tithes, offerings, or um, um, donations. Amen. 
Um, family, I want to take time now to go ahead and share with you guys that after sundown, it is the Shabbat, so after Shabbat, um, you can go over to the website at HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com and you can purchase books to fill your library. We have the number one selling um, Bible in Israel, the um, His Word Gold Edition. Hallelujah. 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 Gold Edition. Um, it has all the names restored back to their Hebraic names. You have words of Yehoshua that are in red. We've got scriptures from the Old Testament that are precepted in the New Testament that mm. are in like a bluish kind of purple. Royal color. blue. Royal, royal, royal blue, hallelujah. Royal, royal, royal blue. blue. Royal blue. <laughs> royal, 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 hallelujah. Yeah. 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 As he yeah. said, royal blue. Right. Uh, <laughs> and pictures of ourselves, people that look just like us, because this book is for us, by us, yes. and to us, and it was written mm -hmm. all about us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our people, our ancestors, and the words are written for such a time as this so that we can reflect back on our lives and how we can make sure that we end up in the kingdom right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you all that are learning our language, Hebrew, every nation on the face of the earth mm -hmm. has its own language. Except for the Negro. <laughs> Except for us. Mm -hmm. But we do have our own That's language, right. and that language is Hebrew. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. not Yiddish. Nope. Right. It's Hebrew. It's Hebrew. Right. Um, and the Testament of Yahshua is written in Hebrew and in English. And Torah Yehoah, um, the Most High Yah, um, poured into Jediah here and um, gave him the inspiration to do yeah. such a thing to let us know as a people that the New Testament was not only written in Greek. No. Right. The New Testament uh, yeah. also has scriptures that are in Hebrew. It was Hebrew. written first in Hebrew. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Great time. Hebrew. Okay. So it's filled or compiled with um, the four Gospels and Revelations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family, do take time out to... Um, Thumbs up the video, like the video, share the video on all your different um, social media networks so that we can make sure the word get around to the four corners of the earth to our sisters and brothers that were scattered abroad. Amen. Um, for more people learning our language, Hebrew, we've got the book and the secret. So that's book one and two of Enoch. And it too is in Hebrew and English. The only of its kind. The only. You will only oh, yeah. find this here, nowhere else. Um, it's lovely. It's amazing. It's got, um, it, it gives you a lot more clarity um, on stories spoke of in the 66. So there's precepts throughout it from the beginning to the end filled with precepts Amen. Um, so that we know that this is um, the word of Yah. Yes. Let me show you guys a little bit inside here. So as you're reading, you will be able to read um, English here, and then it's translated from the Hebrew on that side. So you can actually see both. And um, we've also got lovely pictures in here as well. Hallelujah. So do add to your life. I mean, do add to your collection, family. Yes. And what we've been um, learning from most recently um, is the His Word Concordance and Name Book. So not only does the book have names to help you guys if you were looking for a new name, but it also has profound prophecies um, that you're, again, not going to find anywhere else but here um, at Kai Yeshua, Toda Yehoah, all praise oh, God and glory yeah. goes unto him um, for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that, that he pours out through his Ruach HaKodesh. Um, so just to get, I just wanted to give you guys a little look inside here. You have your, the um, 
what is that? The, the Strong's, Strong's number? number? Yeah. You have your Strong's number here, and then you have your different names, and it even has it in the ancient um, writing, which yes. is paleo, and then next to it, it has it in biblical Hebrew. So you get um, to have a little understanding of what they both looked like. Mm -hmm. And my favorite, my favorite, I can't sing y'all, but I've tried to throw up a joyful noise for the most I got. <laughs> uh, my favorite is the lost acts of the holy apostles. <sighs> Beautiful read. This book right here is profound. Mm, yes. yes. It's very, very profound. Um, it, it, it just, it really is, um, it changes things in your heart. It changes the way you look at your walk. It changes the way you perceive trials and tribulations that we go through today. It really changes that. Um, once we understand the crosses that the apostles had to bear, mm. it's heavy. Yes. It, it, this book is a must-have, family. It's a must-have. Um, it, it gives us more details on stories that were spoke of, like maybe just one sentence in the 66. Mm -hmm. um, like Paul and the lion. Yes. That was one sentence. That gives a whole story. The whole story. With, and we have pictures. We have pictures that were our ancient pictures. Um, from Ethiopia yes. that we learned, or not we learned, but through the Ruach, um, Jediah was um, given the inspiration to put the pictures with the stories. Yes. We had already seen the pictures, but we didn't realize that the pictures were for the stories yes. in the Lost Acts of the Holy yeah. Apostles. Um, so this is a must have family, a must have. Mm -hmm. And then we've got by our very own Jediah Malek II, following in his Abba's footsteps. Um, we've got Joseph, the lost prince of Israel. Amen. His first project um, of many, y'all willing? He is yes. diligently working on more yeah. things for mm -hmm. the nation. This is for the youth of Hebrews, by the youth of Hebrews, Great to job. the youth of Hebrews. Um, very, very good read. Lovely mm -hmm. photos inside. Um, and family, do um, stay tuned because his artwork is elevated <laughs> to new levels. Yes, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. It is well, yeah, see his really, new stuff. Yes, the Ruach um, has really wow. been pouring into him, and his art is just going to profound levels. So, and yeah. his writing. Yes, so stay tuned, oh. family, for more work from our very own oh. Jedi Will the Second, and do support his first project um, of many. And last but not least, we have the Enoch calendar for 2021 and 2022. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Beautiful pictures. Look at those pictures, family. Look at that scroll there at the top. Beautiful scroll. Beautiful scroll. Um, we have the monks inside, um, the renewed monks. We've got all of the feast days available for you, scriptures throughout, the Maserot. Um, we've got the martyrdom of the um, apostles. You can, again, only find this information here. This Enoch calendar is the original, the first, all other calendars derived from this calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, in the center of the calendar, um, on the fourth day, which is the midst of the week, that's in um, like a royal blue color as well, because Yehoshua is the center of all things. Yes. Hallelujah. So if Yehoshua isn't put at the center, then your calendar will not be right. It will be off. So um, family, do take time out to get the calendar so you can be um, aware of all the feast days so you can take off um, of work and be able to do all the yes. things that we've been called to do um, as a people. And now, um, again, family, you can take time out to go to um, the website at kayashua.com forward slash tithes and offerings. 
You can click on the yellow donate button and you can do your tithes, your offerings, and your donations there. Or you can go over to Zell at Kayashua at gmail.com or simply go to Cash App, dollar sign Kayashua. And I want to say Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And again, I want to thank you guys because we're so grateful mm -hmm. that you take your time out to spend with us. This is my Shalom to the people on Facebook as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> And oh, shalom yeah. to everyone that's there on Facebook. Um, Our Facebook family. Shabbat shalom. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah. Yes. if you can get that other one for me, I'll um, shout out to those people there as well. Amen. All right. So Shabbat shalom to our beloved sister Tracy. Shabbat shalom to Sister Iz and Brother Marcus in California. Dang. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom to Ema Eliana. Shabbat Shalom to Raphael Simpson. Shabbat Shalom to Clayton Barnes. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Mark and Sister Lee. Shabbat Shalom to Regina. Shabbat Shalom to Lakia Hood and the Hood family. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, um, Sister Lisa Carson. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to Judah's daughter. Shabbat Shalom to Keisha L. Shabbat Shalom to Jamila. Shabbat Shalom to Emma Gwynn. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Clarence and Sister Angela Burns in California. Shabbat Shalom to Sister um, Yakalia and family. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Idia and family as well. Shabbat Shalom to um, Benea Yad Adin. Shabbat Shalom to Yaakov 12 Yehuda. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Vanessa. Shabbat Shalom, um, oh, I'm sorry, to um, Arnell and Sister uh, Vanessa and family. Shabbat Shalom to um, Pedro. Shabbat Shalom to G Money. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Tasha P. Toha Yeho, we have a lot of people in the building today. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Michelle Whitney. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Kenya. Shabbat Shalom to Akoti Carolyn. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Lenora Collins. Shabbat Shalom to Amar Yehuda. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Carl and Sister Gladys Wilson. Shabbat Shalom to um, Dawi Ben Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom to Elizabeth P. Shabbat Shalom to C. Fagan 72. Shabbat Shalom to um, Ahava Walters. Shabbat Shalom to Debray Howard. Shabbat Shalom to Marsha Watkins. Shabbat Shalom to Marag Mar Marawa Yashchow. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Logic 1611. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Maisha White. Shabbat Shalom to Murky Vision. Shabbat Shalom to Natasha Irizari. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Yashan Benjamin. Shabbat Shalom mm -hmm. to uh, Brother Moses and Sister Kiki. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Queen Hadassah Seven. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Triya Twelve. Shabbat Shalom to Harmony Group Fitness. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom to Hadassah Batya. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Yasha Ben Yosef. Shabbat Shalom to Kohath Ben Yehuda, and Shabbat Shalom to Chef Corin Rochelle. Amen. All right, Shabbat Shalom, family. And if you guys give me one moment here, I'm going to log on and tell the family on Facebook Shabbat Shalom. We're glad everyone's here to fellowship. We pray that this message is a blessing to you. And that it lifts up the most high Yah. Yes. We're excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat Shalom to Aishika Love. Amen. Shabbat awesome. Shalom to Sharon Pinky. Dang. Shabbat Shalom to Kenneth Smith. Uh huh. Shabbat Shalom to Sebastian. Dang. Shabbat Shalom to George Davis. Shabbat Shalom to Lisa Gibbs. 
Um, uh, Shabbat Shalom to Ken Smith. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Marcia Wells. And I want to say Shabbat Shalom to the family that's in the house. Yeah. Um, Shabbat Shalom to my beloved sister, um, Kasita, over there. Shabbat Shalom to Ema Samaya. Amen. Shabbat Shalom to our son, Jadai Malek II. Shalom. And Shabbat Shalom to our lovely Kaya Shua Shabbat Shalom. The best, the best, the best. The best. Um, Brother Nartagus and Sister Pamela. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom, family. So I will now turn it over to you, my love. Oh, hallelujah. All right. All right. Why the heathens owe us reparations? Today we are in the month of Siwan the 13th. This is where we are in time right now, okay? Hallelujah. So, Siwan 13, and next week we'll be in the heathen month of June, but remember we're in the Hebrew month of Siwan. Okay, so this is the Enoch calendar. And in the month of June, we'll have Tammuz, okay? Tammuz. And the summer solstice. So the four, first quarter of the year happens uh, in the end of Sawan and the beginning of Tammuz. This is when the days become longer all the way up until this point here, the summer solstice. That's the longest day of the year. Okay. Then from that point, the days gradually get Shorter and shorter until you reach the fall equinox. Once you get to the fall equinox, it's equal night and equal day. All right, that's what signals the change in the seasons. So the uh, daylight hours, I believe, will be 18. And then I think six hours for the night, I believe, in the Book of Enoch. That occurs during the summer solstice. And that signals the beginning of uh, summer. All right. So there are 360 days in a year, plus the four divisions of the seasons, equaling 364. A circle has 360 degrees. So we got a circle. Now let's say here. Oh, that's not good. Let me do it somewhere else. Okay, so a circle is 360 degrees, okay, and then we have the divisions, right, in the shape of what? A cross. A cross. Jehoshua was crucified at the foundation of the world. So this is the earth and the foundation of the world, his blood was shed. So the divisions of time revolve around the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so that becomes 364 days. So the first portion is spring, which we're in now still. Number one, and then number two is summer. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's get into the study today. I'm going to show a video um, that it was on. Uh, do y'all know of that news channel called Russia Today? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a video that the heathen are talking about. Let's see. Let me pull up and let's see. They know that they have to pay us reparations. The title of this news broadcast is China in Africa prompts frantic apologies from for former colonizers. In other words, because China is gaining influence through their uh, finances, their technology, and their industrialization, China is now entering into the motherland of Africa. And China is trying to 
uh, how should I say? They're trying to influence, okay. infiltrate. Okay. They're trying to infiltrate Africa. Israel is in Africa. Jerusalem is in north northeast Africa. Africa is where all of the resources of the world reside. All of the wealth, all of the gold, all of the silver, all of the precious jewels, wood, stones, uh, rubber, um, everything. Everything that the world needs is in Africa. So now that the Chinese are starting to break away from the United States of America, and they are a rival economic power, they're infiltrating Africa. So what do you think the white man is doing right now? Can you believe that these European nations are actually telling Africans, quote unquote, in Africa, which we know many are our people, you can't trust the Chinese? <laughs> and now they're saying, hey, now they're starting to acknowledge the atrocities they did against our people. And they're now starting to apologize and say, we're sorry for raping and pillaging and colonizing you. Now, uh, the European nations are trying to offer uh, our people and, and, and people in Africa reparations. Do you know that that's happening right now? But the reparations are a slap in the face. Germany, who has made trillions of dollars off of African uh, uh, residents, they're now saying they want to give reparations of a billion dollars over 30 years, I forgot. To say. <laughs> over 30 years. Oh, wow. Over a 30 year period, Germany now wants to start giving Africans, quote unquote, reparations of $1 billion. Wow. When they made trillions. Yes. So the most high have the heathen telling on itself. So uh, let's play a little bit. Oh, we, we didn't get into the word yet. Yeah. We got to do the word first. We got to get this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Revelations chapter 3. We're going to read some Hebrew. Revelations chapter 3. Testament of Yahshua. Revelations 3, the assembly of Philadelphia. Wow. Revelations 3, chapter 7. What does Philadelphia mean? Brotherly love. We have to show brotherly love to our people in these last days and end times. What we're seeing is we're starting to see the nations that comprise up the United States of America, they're starting to split off and go back into their own kind now. So as that happens, we have to show brotherly love in order to endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelations 3 and 7, Testament of Yahshua. What El Malakwahau Philadelphia and to the angel of the assembly. Assembly or quote unquote church in Hebrew is Quahau. Quahau. Kruf. Hey. Lamed. Quahau. That's how you say assembly. Quahau. Quahau. Assembly or church. Quahau. Quahau. You gotta say that? Quahau. 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 Let's look that name up. Let's see if we can find that in the Strongs. All right. Quahau. Bear with me one second. Okay. Oof. Hey. Hey. Lame. And then, hmm. Oof. And why is it not typing? Hmm. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Hey. Lame. Okay. There we go. Okay. Kwa Hao. Hebrew word. H6950. Let me magnify that on the screen for everyone. Quahau. H6950. Read it. H6950. Quahau. 
To convoke or assemble. Assemble. Selves. So we say an assembly. A quote unquote church. Quahal. To gather yourselves together. Doesn't scripture say that in Zephaniah 2 and 1? Gather yourselves together, O nation, not desire. Quahal. Assembly. Okay. Wa'el mal aquahau, Philadelphia. To the angel of the quahau of Philadelphia. Katov, write. Katav. Katav. Means to write. Katav, write. Ketov, right. Ko Amar HaKodesh, thus saith the Holy One. Ha'amiti, emet, is the root of this. Aleph, mem, tau, truth. Okay? Amiti means, comes from the word emet. Like the name Emmet. Okay? Truth. The truthful one. Ashir Bayado Mafteak Dawi. That has in his hand the Mafteak or the key. From the word Patak, which means to open. Mafteak. Key. Maf te ak. Dawi, the key of David. Ha poteak, that opens, what ain segor, and none shall close. What segor and closes, what ain poteak, and none shall open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the book of Revelations. That's Hikalut in Hebrew. We're in chapter 3, beginning at verse 7. Mm -hmm. And to the angels of the assembly in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath, the key of Dawid. Mm -hmm. He shall open and none shall shut, Amen. and he shall shut and none Amen. shall open. The things that Yehoshua gives to us, none can take from us. Amen. What happens when he gives us reparations? Ain't nobody going to be able to take you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The only thing you can do is be simple and give it away. But none can take it. Amen. And I don't think none of us are giving it away. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Verse 8. Yadati. Yada means to know. I have known. Et maaseka. I know your works. Hine. Natati. Hine means behold. Natati lefneka sha'ar. I have him behold, Natati, I have given lefneka before you sha'ar, a gate or a door. Patuak, an open door. I put before you an open door. When he opens the door for us, no one will be able to close it. I share lo you cow. No one shall be able. Each, no man shall be able, le sagro, to close it. When she opens the door for us, no one's going to be able to close it for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Moses opened and split the Red Sea, y'all made a door for us in the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was Pharaoh able to open it back up once y'all said, I'm closing this water back over those chariots? No. Hallelujah. The door he closes, no man, no man can open it. Not even Pharaoh. Not even Biden. <laughs> you can have Biden and Trump and Obama. And they still can't open what he's going to close. Hallelujah. Ki koak me'at. Because your strength was little. They took away our power. They took away our economic power too. Took away our strength, so our strength was little. 
Laka with Tishmor, but you have kept from the word Shamar, which means to keep or to watch. Et Dimari, you've kept my word. Do you keep Yah's word through good or through bad? Through plenty or through lack? In joy and in gladness. Will you hold fast to his word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've held fast to, you've kept my word. Well, lo, kekashta, you have not denied Bashemi from the word Shem. Which means, which means name. Go ahead. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the formula right there. Keeping his word and not denying his name. How many people in the world or so-called in the truth try to get you to deny either one? Mm -hmm. That's who you have to use your discernment to guard yourself against. All right? Verse 9. Hini notain anashim mikkanesif. Behold, I give the men of this uh, Knesset. Knesset means also like a holy place or a gathering or a synagogue. Mikaneset. Knesset. Let me write it down. Knesset equals synagogue. That's how you say it in Hebrew. Knesset. I have made those from the men of the Knesset Ha Satan, the Knesset or the synagogue of Satan, Ashir Yomru, and they say, Yehudim Anaknu, we are Yehudim, we are the Jews. And are not. Wow. Well, ain't now, and they are not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are not. So guess what? All of the blessings that they have stolen that were associated with the house of Israel, right. they now have to reparate. Praise God. Now they're in debt to us. Right. We've been in debt to them. We got all kinds of debt. Credit card debt. Phone debt. <laughs> tax debt. House debt. House debt. All kinds of debts. Credit. College. Loans. The borrower is servant to the lender. So they made us borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. And to the day y'all woke us up and said no more. It's reparation time. Hallelujah. Ki dovre shekwe pema. For they speak lies. By saying they are Yehudim, they have spoken lies. Shekwir. Shekwir is how we say lie in Hebrew. Shekwir. That's how you say false messiah too. Shekwir HaMashiach. The lying messiah. Which they translate as anti-messiah. The false or the lying messiah. From the word Shekwir. For they lie. Hini, O say, Ashir Yavo'u. Behold, I will make, I am making Ashir Yavo'u, them to come, Lahish Takot, to worship. I will make the fake Jews come and worship. Hallelujah. And when we say, like, where this peace is love, eshtak away. That means I will worship. Lehishtakot, lehishtak away, means he will make them worship. He will make them worship. Leragleka, unto your feet. 
will ya do ki ani a half tika that I have, and they shall know that I have loved you. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 9. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the congregation of Satan. Amen. Which say they are Yehudim and are not, but do lie. Amen. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Amen. And to know that I have loved thee. I have loved thee Hallelujah. from the word what? Aha. Aha. Aleph. Hey. Bait. Love. Or Ahava. Love. I have loved thee. Ya'an shamarta the bar, and you have kept my word. Sav lanuti, and you have been patient. Sav lanut. Sav lanut. That's how you say patience. You have been patient with me. Esh marka. From the word Shemar, I will keep thee. I will watch over thee. Gam ani misat ha nisayon. I will keep you from the hands or the work of temptation. Ha atida lavo that shall come. Al tavel kula upon all of the earth. Let not soak to try to test at Yoshbe, the inhabitants of Haaretz, the earth. Go ahead. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. So don't stop keeping the word. Don't run out of patience. When you are tried, Yah is testing your endurance and your impatience. Wow. So when you run in low on cardio, you got to get your cardio up so you can endure. Don't give up. Say, I got to work on this cardio. I got to work on this endurance. Right. It's not all about strength. You got to have endurance too. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, mm -hmm. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Amen. Verse 11, Hini, by, behold, I am coming. Mehera, mahir, means quick. Mahir. Fast, quick. I'm coming quick. Hakazek ba'ashelaka to come and take you. I believe. Lemaan lo yekwak ish et nizreka. Go ahead, read that. Verse eleven. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast, which thou hast. Mm -hmm. That no man take thy crown. Hold fast. Okay. Kazek is to hold. From uh, Kazek is where we get Hezekiah. Kazekiah. Yekizkuya. He will hold fast to Yah. So we have to hold fast to Yah that no one can take our crown. Hallelujah. 12. Ham Nezayak. Ham Nezayak. From the word Nun Zade Chet Netzak. To overcome. You have to finish the race. It doesn't necessarily matter how fast you run, but you have to finish. You have to overcome. Victory, overcome. 
and eternity. That all means Nezak in Hebrew. The one who overcomes will be victorious and will inherit eternity. Nitzak. Can you say that? Nitzak. Nitzak. Let's look that up. In Psalms, Psalms opens a lot of times to the chief musician. The same word, not Zach, to be to excel, a chief musician, an overseer, to set forward. But it also means to be preferred. It means strength. It means victory, perpetual, eternity, forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's see what else this means. Blood and strength. Okay. Hebrew word H5329 through H5330, 31, and H5332. To overcome, to have strength, to have victory. To oversee, to be a chief singer. Those who overcome, how do we overcome slavery? They did a lot of singing, right? Yes, they did. Because we are Yehuda, because we praise ourselves through it. No one else would have got through that. We will only to get through it because we sang worship and praise and repentance to Yah in our hardest trials as a nation. In our greatest affliction, we worshipped him. We lifted up praises. So we overcame. We had the victory because of that praise. And through that, we get victory. We get eternal life. Okay? We have strength. Okay, then switch back. I got a delay. Let me... Uh, and being edified so far? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Hebraic thought. So we can read in English, which we do. We have to, of course. But let's sprinkle it with some Hebraic understanding. Hallelujah. All right. Do we have any comments so far? Yes. All right. All right. Ahava Walter says. Ahava, that's right. Love. <clears throat> saw a video this week where they was talking about how the Chinese built a particular building in Africa. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the parliament building, but the servers and the walls were budged. Bugged? Yes, bugged. Mm -hmm. They're spying on mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to build more infrastructure in Africa, but it's actually a form of enslavement. Yes, they're building infrastructure. Infrastructure means roads and buildings. So they're building roads because now they want to take the resources, but they need roads to travel their trucks on yes. to get to their docks so that they can ship it over to China by sea or by air. So yeah, they say, hey, let us help build your infrastructure. Let's help build, let's help you build roads. Why? So you can steal our stuff and drive them down the road. Let's help you build buildings. Why? So that they can have offices within your territory, building up strongholds. But the reason why they're able to do this uh, with less suspicion is because the white man has done this for hundreds of years, and now the white people, the, the Europeans are getting upset, and they're saying, you can't trust the Chinese. We're going we're gonna to look at that. Can you believe that? Right. <laughs> The only difference is China doesn't have a history of colonization and terrorism within Africa to a large extent. They do. They're making a track record now, though. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Sister Yakalia says, Shabbat Shalom. Did you know that Al-Kibulan is the original name of Africa? Mm. Al-Kibulan in Hebrew means 
Alkibu Lan, Mother of Mankind, or Garden of Eden. It's the oldest and the only word of indigenous. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that. Indigenous strong to origin. That. Mm -hmm. Um, Chocolate Melanin says the government of Sierra Leone, West Africa, mm -hmm. has sold 250 acres of beach and a protected rainforest to China to build a fishing harbor. Mm -hmm. Africa has lost her mind. Exactly. <laughs> so they ain't going to have no problem building infrastructure because the infrastructure is for them to take the fish away from their waters. Because Chinese waters polluted. All right, is that it? Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, RCLM says they've given loans to build buildings mm -hmm. and make the mm -hmm. repayment so steep and strict that the country cannot repay and the Chinese take over the building for their use. All right. We're going to read about that because now the United States and the European nations are telling Africa, look out for China, it's a debt trap. <laughs> <laughs> After they done put Africa in debt for centuries. And Yaakko 12 Yehuda says, All praises to the Most High Yah. I was just studying this chapter on Friday before the Shabbat. Hallelujah. Amen. Confirmation. Praise God. Ham Overcome. Ham We have to overcome. Ham verse 12. Etenu le amod behekam. Those who overcome, I will give to them to be to stand or to be a pillar. Amod, amud. A pillar stands. Amud. Like Ahmad Rashad. That name Ahmad means to stand. Okay? Behekam in the temple. Elohai, in the temple of my Elohim, I will make you a pillar if you overcome. Well, lo, you'd say, oh, then you shall not leave the temple anymore. You won't be cast into captivity any longer. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. <laughs> Hakutsa. You won't be cast outside anymore. Wakatavti Aliwa, and I shall write upon you at Shem. We are Shemitic. That means the name of the Father is written in us. It's written in our DNA. Shem. Elohai, the name of my Elohim, were at Shem Ir Elohai. And also the name of the city of my Elohim, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. In Hebrew, it's Jerusalem, but a lot of times you'll see Jer Jerusalem also saying uh, pronounced as Jerusalem. There's Jerusalem, and there's Jerusalem. When you have Ayin in the end of a word in Hebrew, that means it's a pair. That means there's two of them. So we grew up saying Yerushalayim as a non-Messianic, not understanding the new Jerusalem that's going to come. Oh, Just always pronouncing it Yerushalayim. Okay. Because a new one's going to come. Okay. Hakadasha, the new Yerushalayim. Hayoret. That shall descend or come de down from the word Yered, like Jared, the father of, was that Enoch's father, right? Mm -hmm. Jared, Yered, shall descend to come down. Mishamayim, from heaven. Me'im, Elohai, and from my Elohim. So Elohim is how we say what? God. Now, if you want to say my Elohim or my God, quote unquote, it's Elohim. Oops. 
That's not writing? Oh, they're froze? Okay. I think it's overloading the system a little bit. <laughs> 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 it's too much truth for the system. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. LO high equals my Elohim. Elohim, what does that mean? God. God. My God? Elohim. My Elohim? Elohim. Elohim? God. Elohim? My Elohim. Eloheka. Your Elohim. Elohim. What about Eli? Eli is also my my El. Eli is singular. Elohim is more plural, representing the God. Eli, my my El. Eli, okay. Eli is here. My Elohim is help. Okay, or my Elohim helps. Okay, so when you say Eli. That's singular, Elohim, Godhead. Okay. Well, et shemi he chadash, and the new name. He's going to write a new name on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We're in the book of Revelations, chapter 3, and I'm at verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. How do we say overcome? Nitzak. Nitzak. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my Elohim. Mm -hmm. Elohai. That's how we say my Elohim. Elohai. Say Elohai. 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 My Elohim. Elohai. Elohai, my Elohim. And the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my Elohim, mm -hmm. and I will write upon him my new name. Amen. Me, who, or whosoever, I share, O Zain, have ears. Love. Yishma et Asher, let them hear what Ha Ruach Omer le Quichelo, what the Ruach says to the assemblies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Verse 13. Oh. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Ruach said unto the assemblies. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yah. All right, let's get to the video now. Was there any comments before we get rolling? Um. No, there was one on Facebook. I didn't read any from Facebook, so okay. I'll read this. Shalom. One. Sister Carolyn Wood says, the pot, Europeans, calling the kettle, Black. China. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 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 All right, let's look at this. Um, can y'all see it? No, I can't magnify that. China in Africa prompts frantic apologies from former colonizers. Frantic. <laughs> I'm going to read this comment before we get rolling. It's funny how all those who hold the world's, the words human rights, quote unquote, so dearly on their lips, have such a bloody and criminal past. Mm -hmm. If it's not for the Chinese, would they have apologized for their crimes? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read another one. They're froze. Mm. They ain't freezing today. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. They don't want to pay up. All right, here we go. Oh, that got like an evil face to that one. Um, oh, you like that? That one. This one? Yeah. Thank you to China. China. Otherwise, those imperialists will never have admitted their mistakes and never would have apologized. But we thank Yah, not China. Hallelujah. Because China's going to do the same thing. Exactly. Lip service. Exactly. 
an apology that is forced because your victims have decided to grow up here and look elsewhere for better opportunities is not an apology, but damage control. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's Hallelujah. listen to this, okay? Fair use, okay? With fair use, we have the right to look at video for uh, purposes of, what is it? Uh, teaching. Teaching. And criticism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Of RTMR, our nation's capital, this I'm is the news with Rick Sanchez. Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez, and I want to welcome our viewers from all over the world, including those of you watching us on the Portable TV app, which allows you to watch us I'm gonna turn this down. no matter where you are using your smartphone. So there is a uh, gold rush of sorts in Africa. Did you know that the world has recently awakened to the enormous potential of a continent which in the past was always seen kind of like as, a, as an also-ran? So what that means is the economic future for Africa probably bodes pretty darn well. But I want to go back, if I can, for just a minute to Africa's past instead. You see, by the early 1900s, most of Africa, it was colonized. By the early 1900s, most of Africa wow. was colonized. So here he has a chart. And on his chart, he shows Africa divided. So the UK owns all that's in pink here. That's England. And with that is Jerusalem. This is where Israel is in this region. And Egypt is right here. So the English, the Brits own all of them here and here also in South Africa, and a little bit here on the West. And the West is where a lot of our people were uh, sent into cargo slave ships. We have the blue representing France. France owned all of this piece over here in West Africa, and a little bit down here. Then we have the Portuguese in purple, here and here. And then we have Germany in the light blue. Okay. So now, and Spain is right up in here. So now we're seeing, oh, Belgium right here in the center. Now we're gonna let their own words tell you how now the Europeans are scrambling because they're losing power over the homeland. So now, only because China's coming over there do they wanna start to admit to some of the atrocities and pretend like they're gonna get reparations of a billion dollars over 30 years after they've made trillions off of us, which is an abomination. It's, that's why Yehoshua said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and do not, but do lie. I will make them come and worship before your feet to let them know that I have loved you. Because they continue in their evil, in their wretchedness, even up to this point, where they're losing their grip on power around the world. So let's pray some more. Maybe the better word is owned by mainly seven years past instead. You see, by the early 1900s, most of Africa, it was colonized. Maybe the better word is owned by mainly seven European powers, right? It was uh, Britain, France, Germany, Belgium, Spain, Portugal, and Italy. And, and as you can see on this map, they, they literally divvied it up. They, 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 they just divvied Africa up into parts and then forced the people mm -hmm. in Ethiopia, the only place that's independent. Ethiopia is the only place that was not colonized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's where our heritage was stored untouched by the heathen. So we had uh, a group of Israelites from the time of King Solomon who came here to Ethiopia. When Solomon married Queen of Sheba and they had a son together, and you had descendants come here, from here, from Israel, all the way to Cush, to Ethiopia. So you had Israelites in Ethiopia, just like you got Israelites here in America today. So when we say Ethiopia, we don't mean they're actually Hamites. They're Israelites in Ethiopia, like when we say American, 
we know we're not American, we're Israelites in America. All right? Hallelujah. So this is the only one that was independent. And so this kept our records preserved. All praises to Yah. The rest was colonized, or as he said, just truthfully, it means the Europeans owned it. They stole it. They raped it. They robbed it. They desecrated it. They polluted it. They stole artifacts, books, history, knowledge, gold, silver, wealth, people. King Leopold. What do y'all know about King Leopold? The Belgian, right? I think he was Belgian or Portuguese. He went into Congo. Was it Congo? For rubber. And became one of the richest men alive in the modern era. I think he was in the 1800s or so. And he forced the Congolese to give up rubber. And those who didn't work fast enough, what did he do? He sliced their hands off, chopped their hands off, chopped their feet off, and took photographic evidence. And we have it to this day. So let's look at that. Let's look at King Leopold. This is why they owe us reparations. Proverbs 13 and 22. Let's get that and then look at what they did to us. Proverbs. Mishle. Proverbs 13 and 22. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, that's Mishle mm -hmm. in Hebrew, beginning at verse 22. Okay. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Are they good people? No. no. They steal inheritances. They don't leave it. To leave an inheritance means you have to create a legacy. And when you create a legacy, then you can leave an inheritance. Oh. But if you're stealing, then you don't leave anything. You don't leave a legacy, mm -hmm. except you leave debt. That's why they're going to owe us reparations. Right. Go ahead. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Hallelujah. Get ready. Because payback is coming. Hallelujah. 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 So now let's look at King Leopold. Yeah. King Leopold of Belgium. The Congo Genocide. Let's just look at images real quick. Mm. And they bragged about this. They cut his hand off because he didn't harvest the rubber fast enough. So they cut his right hand off. This is a baby and probably a girl. They cut both of her hands off. Oh, one hand off. That's her right hand. They cut off the left hand here. And took pictures bragging about it. You think Yah is not just that he's going to allow them to get away with this indefinitely? We have to nitzah. We have to endure. We have to overcome. Look at the young girl. Cut her hand off. This man's hands cut off. Here, they had our people shackled in slavery and in bondage. And they have the nerve to tell us, look out for China. <laughs> Watch out for China. Let's read some comments. Oh, All right. More. What actions did King Leopold do? Yokes of iron around our necks. Did this happen to the fake Jews? No. Can you find one picture of a fake Jew with a yoke of iron on his neck? Not one. Not even in the so-called Holocaust. 
Did you ever see pictures of a, a Holocaust survivor? Did you ever hear these quote unquote Holocaust survivors? Did you ever hear them complain about how heavy those iron yokes were on their neck? No, no. Yet they got reparations from the United States. Did a Holocaust survivor ever talk about how hard it was picking cotton? No. Did they ever talk about shackles on their feet? No. Did they ever talk about a slave master? No. They might hear, you might hear them talk about being persecuted a little bit, if that even happened. But do you ever hear them talking about a slave master? No. Did they have slave masters? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So in Belgium, what they do is they have a festival. I think it's called Nigger Festival or something like that. And the Europeans, the Edomites in Belgium have an annual festival where they all put blackface on. And they make chocolate hands representing the hands of the people they cut off. Let's uh, take a look at it. And this is King Leopold here. He murdered 10 million. 10 million. You think they're not going to have to pay for this? Let's see. Belgium. Let's see if we can find a video on that. No, probably I better pull up an article. So that there's no too much copyright thing that they try to uh, accuse us of. Let's put Bel don't you say Belgian chocolate? Is it that supposed to be like great chocolate? Yeah. It's an insult. You see it? Belgian. You seen it? Mm-hmm. Where? Go back up, I think. Go back up? Yeah, there it is, now go down. Belgian chocolate. Mm-hmm. Belgian chocolate hands is what. Oh, wow. They do this every, they do this on the regular. These are the hands of our people that they cut off. They eat this and laugh and mock us. You think they're not going to have to pay? They're eating and laughing and mocking at the hands of these slaves who had their hands severed off because they couldn't make enough rubber for King Leopold. These are children here. These are children. Boys and girls. See they mock us. They get a black face and they put chocolate around it. Belgian chocolate hand, let's put festival. You got it? You can drop it to me. We're going to pull up an article and we're going to read and show you what they did. And they have the nerve to tell people in Africa to watch out for the Chinese. Got it. Brother Lee G says, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, you speaking too hard on the on these Ashkenazis. They gonna freeze your TV screen again. <laughs> <laughs> this country with a colonial history has a blackface problem. This is what they do. They dress up like this every year at a festival. They put bones through their noses and they get drunk and they eat chocolate hands and chocolate bodies, naked chocolate bodies. And the, the females, they stuff their behind to make their behinds look really big, and they mock us. When the festive... Okay, go ahead. You want to read that? All right. CNN. When the festive figure, Sinker... T- Sinker... Or Sinter- 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 Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Roll through the Dutch town, 
Uh, a pill don't. A That's pill probably don't. Santa Claus right there. Wow. They got a Santa Claus and they got Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In November, he was greeted by TV crews, cheering crowds and an inevitable round of furious protest. The anger was not directed at Santa Claus himself, whose annual arrival festival marks the start of the Christmas season in the country. It was aimed at his sidekick, Black, Black Pete, Pete, whose appearance in blackface, mm -hmm. a curly Afro wig, and red lipstick divides the country on an annual basis. Every, every year they do this. But while controversies over the continued existence of Black Pete in the Netherlands have become as well established a tradition as the character itself, one of its bordering nations is yet to hold a reckoning over its own relationship with blackface. So who is America to talk about this? We got CNN complaining about them doing blackface when American TV was founded on blackface. American television programs from the days of black and white was founded on blackface. So who are they to lecture the Belgians? So that's Black Pete. I want to show, yeah, they touched the babies, the savage, during last month's festival. They call that the savage. He got a chain on his neck, chains, yoke of iron on his hands. This is to insult us. This is how they dress. In blackface with the, the Belgian flag on their face. Over one eye. Mm. With a black puppet and black hair. The era of Belgium's King Leopold. The second is remembered far more clearly in what was then called the Congo Free State, a rubber and ivory rich region in Central Africa ruled personally and brutally by the monarch who was eager to exploit Africa's wealth. And it's the same thing today. They're exploiting our wealth, our homeland, the human resources, mm -hmm. the natural resources. Leopold ruled between 1885 and 1908 before it was then taken over by the Belgian state until 1960. The cruelties imposed on African laborers to force them to collect rubber beggar the Im uh, imagination explained historian Matthew Stannard of Berry College in the United States, who has authorized works on the period and its remembrance in Belgium. He noted one particularly gruesome example, the accounting system known as Mains Coopus in which officers would sever and turn in a hand of a victim to keep track of those they had wow. killed. So they numbered the amount of our people they killed by cutting their hand off to keep track of how many people, and they had over 10 million hands, plus the hands of those who they allowed to live. Is this not terrorism to the highest level? But back home, in total, it is estimated that millions died under Leopold II's rule. And whenever they talk about an evil man in history, who did the United States always point to? Hitler. Hitler. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's no Hitler. Mm -hmm. They try to make Hitler the scapegoat for everything that a white person can do evil be because he did it against people who didn't look like us. And they make it like he's the worst of the worst and he's not. All right, so. This is where the chocolate hands come from. That's what they did and that's what they do. In those areas to adapt to their languages and their cultures while they exploited Africa's resources. Did y'all ever learn about King Leopold in public school? Y'all mm -mm. didn't learn about that in world history? Of course not. Y'all must have fell asleep in class. 
Surely that's what happened. You didn't learn about that son this year? No? Homeschooling? They didn't they didn't give you no they didn't give you no chapters on that? No. Hmm. It was a successful exercise in control through administrative domination. Terrorism. Now, since then, many regions of Africa have kicked out those guys, those colonizers, and they gained their independence. And they're now being courted by the United States, instead, by Russia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's nemesis, Iran, but most of all, by the Mac Daddy, China. China is expected to continue investing hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructure in Africa. They're hundreds of billions of dollars. Are they doing that out of the kindness of their heart? No. Hundreds of billions of dollars now the Chinese want to pour into Africa because they love us. I mean, they're planning to build and announce uh, roads, water treatment plants, communication systems, power plants, and a whole lot more. And, you know, here's the thing about China. Here's the thing about China that is uh, a differentiator, if you will. In Africa, this is the main reason Donald Trump had beef with China. Because they're trying to take over influence in Africa and steal the resources. Plus, economically, they're coming on par with the United States. They're afraid of losing their grip on our people. This is why they have to pay. So now they're making apologies, not because they're sorry, but because someone else is moving into the picture. Go ahead. We're going to read another article. They dress up like us too. Chinese TV Lunar New Year Gala features blackface performers. These are Chinese people dressing in blackface. Because they love Africa. They love our people. Beijing, can you read that? Can you see that? Oh, uh, yes. Lu Yu oh, okay. Beijing. Chinese state TV included dancers in blackface portraying Africans during a national broadcast as Asia welcomed the lunar year of the ox. Wow. The but the they want to tell us about, uh, what do they call it here? It's all in the news. Chinese hatred. Uh, oh, the Asian. Oh, a Asian. The black people killing the Asians. Yes. But white people been killing them. Black people just fight them. Right. White people kill and murder them. Right. What do they call it? Asian hate. Asian, Asian hate. Asian hate. They forgot to mention this. They forgot to mention this Asian hate. The hate of our people they have. What have we ever done against China? Nothing. This is how we know the scriptures are real because we see the ancient hatred that these heathen have against us right. even though we, we don't even do anything right. against them. What did our people do against the Chinese when we've been enslaved here in the United States? Why would they mock and hate us for? Let's read some scriptures. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Hallelujah. Isaiah sixty. Let's start at verse one. Or in the book of Isaiah, that's Yeshaya in Hebrew, chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Arise. Wake up! 
Arise. That doesn't just mean arise. That means wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Israel. Rise up. Wake up. Arise. Shine. For thy light is come. Thy light is come. The sun is shining through the blinds now. It's time to get up, Israel. The light is coming. Some people want to keep us in darkness. And the glory of Yehoah is risen upon thee. Mm -hmm. For, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yehoah shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Upon thee, upon oh, us. Yeah. His glory Amen. and his light will be seen upon us. Verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. They're going to have to come to our light, too, where we had to come to their light. But they're not just going to come to our light with empty hands. We're going to see. Verse 4, and up thine eyes. Lift them. Oh, I'm sorry. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see, all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Yah's going to gather our people again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our sons and daughters have been scattered away from us by the design of the heathen. But Yah is going to make them have to bring them back. This gathering is going to be greater than the gathering when we left the land of Egypt. Now we're coming from the four corners of the earth. And wheresoever it is that Yah will have us gather and assemble ourselves, they're going to have to bring us. Amen. So you know those horses and chariots that they carry and pull people on, mm -hmm. kings and princes? We're going to have people having to carry us on those chariots, pulling those things. Go ahead. Verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto They're thee. They're going to have to come unto us for all that they've done. Now they're admitting, which we're going to see, how much evil they did. Not how much, but just that they did a little bit. But they're going to be forced to acknowledge everything they did. Go ahead. Verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The drum, drum dairies, dromedaries. dromedaries of Midian and Alpha. All Apha. They, Apha. Mm -hmm. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold. They shall bring gold. what? Gold, gold and, and incense. incense. They're going to have to pay reparations and they're going to have to pray. As it says in Revelations, I'll make them come down and worship before thy feet. That's what the incense represents. They're going to have to worship. They're going to worship Yah and Yahushua by worshiping us. Salvation is of the Yahudim. the Yahudim. You can't get salvation without coming through our people for it. To have us intercede for them on to Yehoshua HaMashiach. We are the kings and priests of this world. Amen. So the nations, the remnants of the nations that will be saved, they have to come to us with gold and incense. And then Whosoever would would make intercession of Yehuda on their behalf. They're going to have to pay. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of Yehovah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Apha, all they from Sheba shall come. Mm -hmm. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of Yehovah. Amen. All the flocks of Kadar. The Arabs are going to have to pay too. 
Kedar. Those are the dark skinned Arabs. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. Mm -hmm. The rams of Neboyeth shall minister unto thee. What does minister mean? Serve. 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 They're going to have to serve us for what they did. The Arabs had a huge part in the slave trade. They just castrated the men so they couldn't reproduce. So it wasn't as perpetual as American slavery. They castrated all of the male slaves and turned the women, all of them, into concubines. So those generations died out. America made an industry out of it. and said, no, you don't do it that way. You can't make money like that. You mix them up here, you breed them here, you ship them out there, put them to slave, put them to work. You make, a, you make an industry out of this. We can get so rich. We can build the wealthiest nation in the world. Let me show you how to do it. Go ahead. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Neboyeth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my This Lord. is the only way that a Gentile can be received by Yah. This is the only way they can gain acceptance by Yah. Go ahead. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves of their windows? Surely the isle shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first. So at first they brought us in slave ships into captivity, but they're going to have to bring us on cruise ships back to the Most High. Surely the isle shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first. To bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, they're going to have to bring us back on yachts and cruise ships for what they've done to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are that generation that's going to witness these things by Shem Hoshua. Hallelujah. Surely the isle shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first mm -hmm. to bring thy sons from far, mm -hmm. their silver and their gold with, with them, reparations in their hands. Hallelujah. Until the name of Yehovah. Until Elohim, the name of Yehovah thy Elohim, Yehovah Eloheka, your Elohim. And to the Holy One of Israel. And the Holy One of Israel, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Yeah. Because He hath glorified thee. Because Yah will glorify Hallelujah. us Hallelujah. in the world and the earth. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And now they're going to have to build up the walls mm. of the kingdom. Mm. Amen. We're going to have the big house. Mm. They're going to have to build it. And their kings shall minister unto thee. Biden is going to have to pick the corns off your feet. <laughs> 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 Biden is going to have to walk you down the stairs. I hope you don't fall over. <laughs> uh, when you tell Biden what to do, he's going to have to not forget. He's going to have to try to remember. For in my wrath, I smote thee. For in my wrath, I smote thee. But in Jacob wrestled against the angel of Yah. He fought against Yah, so Yah had to hit him back. Mm. He displaced Yaakov's hip. Representing his loins, his descendants. They were displaced mm. for him fighting against Yah. Mm. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor. And I had, had mercy, mercy on, on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a time when he was angry with us. But this is the time when he's going to redeem us. Let no one take your crown. The doors 
Yehoshua open, no man can shut. And when he shuts, when he closes, none can open. He has the key of David in his hand. That's why they couldn't overcome the descendants of David in Ethiopia. The door he shut, no one could open. They could not colonize our people there. We got comments. Yeah, we have a few. Okay. Um, all right. Well, all right. Well, let's get back. We're gonna do some video. So we see the Chinese were mocking us too, right? So it will be juvenile and foolish for people in Africa to trust the Chinese either, instead of trusting in the Most High Yah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Pretty simple if you think about it. It has no history there of exploitation. Infrastructure in Africa. They're, I mean, they're planning to build and announce uh, roads, water treatment plants, communication systems, power plants, and a whole lot more. And you know, here's the thing about China. Here's the thing about China that is uh, a differentiator, if you will. In Africa, it is not perceived as a threat. Why? Pretty simple if you think about it. It has no history there of exploitation or colonization. So why is that important? Why are we even, why are we even talking about this on this day? Here's why. French President Emmanuel Macron has just come out and he's apologized to the nation of Rwanda for the harm that his country brought to the Rwandan people, including for France's role in the genocide that occurred in 1994 that resulted in the deaths of 250,000 people. So now the European wants to come and say he's sorry. The scripture says, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. If you're sorry, you're going to show it by your deeds and your actions. Mm -hmm. Not just because China is there now, or China has the potential to be there. You've been raping this land for centuries, and now you see that the ride is just about over. Now you want to say you're sorry? But wait, today, this, this guy, German uh, foreign minister, Heiko Maas, he went even further. He's announcing that Germany is not only acknowledging and apologizing for its role in the genocide that took place in Namibia in 1904, Germany is actually going to offer reparations for its colonial past with a commitment of more than a billion dollars that's going to be paid out over the next 30 years. A billion dollars over 30 years. What is that? That's not even minimum wage to the people who live there. One billion dollars times millions and millions and millions of people over 30 years? That's a slap in the face. And they made trillions. Did y'all ever see that movie, Austin Powers? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember Dr. Evil? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen this in the comments on the video. Dr. Evil would have all of these plots, you remember? Mm -hmm. And what would he want in exchange? There's some kind of something. One billion dollars. And then the people on his team would always laugh at him, saying, like, why are you living in the 1980s a billion dollars? Oh, okay. Ain't even that much no more. There ain't money no more. Oh, yeah. But he kept thinking he was so smart, and, you know, he would do his thing and say, wow. oh, unless you give me $1 billion, I'm going to blow up the world, and this and this and that. Wow. Ain't like a billion dollars. Nothing with a billion dollars. It's nothing. Imagine that. Imagine that. So here's the question. Are these former colonizers truly contrite? 
they really feel bad about what they did and that's it? Or are they just waking up to the economic reality of China's increasing role, if not dominion, of investments in Africa? Where else are you going to get this story? Hmm. Nowhere. But he you going to get it in CNN? No. Nope. NBC? No. Nope. CBS? No. Nope. Nope. But I tell you what, Russia Today ain't going to tell you the children of Israel. On the news with Rick Sanchez, because we do believe it's time to do news again. possibly come to mind. For example, European countries are apologizing to African nations for colonization, but to what end? We're going to do a deep dive into that. Is it fair that Microsoft and Apple are not allowing repairmen to fix their products? More expensive. This topic of uh, Africa, China, and the horrible history of European colonization. As we learned this week, that both France and Germany are saying, we are sorry for what we did. And they soon follow with a famous ex-lover's request, will you take me back to Africa? Here with more on this most fascinating story is correspondent Alex Mihailovich. Approximately a century after the end of African colonization began to take place, some European nations have admitted their misdeeds. For example, in 2013, the United Kingdom apologized to Kenya and a list of other nations where it set up camp. And now... Germany has done the same with Namibia. In fact, it's gone a step further. Germany has admitted to taking part in a genocide in Namibia and has agreed to pay for its past. That's only because China is trying to step in. Right. They have had 400 years to say sorry. They have had trillions of dollars of resources stolen and now they say this are. And as a gesture of recognition of the incalculable suffering that was inflicted on the victims, we want to support Namibia and the descendants of the victims with a substantial program amounting to 1.1 billion euros. And this. He said, Did you hear what he said? <laughs> Approximately a century after the end of African colonization began to take place, some European nations have admitted their misdeeds. For example, in 2013, the United Kingdom apologized to Kenya and a list of other nations where it set up camp. And now, Germany has done the same with Namibia. In fact, it's gone a step further. Germany has admitted to taking part in a genocide in Namibia and has agreed to pay for its past. That's easy. And as a gesture of recognition of the incalculable suffering that was... As a gesture of recognition of the incalculable suffering, we're going to give you a billion dollars. Right. But it's incalculable. Right. What we've made <laughs> off of you, we can't even quantify it because there's not enough zeros. There's not enough zeros and trillions of how much we've made off of you, robbed you of, raped you of, murdered you for. So we're going to give this token of appreciation with a billion dollars. You have, you know how many billionaires are <laughs> walking around the planet? That's one one person's, let's say like a person like, uh, what is it, uh, Jeff Bezos. That ain't nothing to him, a billion dollars. We're talking about millions of people. Michael Jordan got, what, $2 billion now. That's half of his wealth, and he's still wealthy. For millions of people. Maybe hundreds of millions. Inflicted on the victims. We want to support Namibia and the descendants of the victims with a substantial program. A substantial program. Of 1 billion euros, and this will focus in particular. A substantial program of $1 billion. For your incalculable suffering. No, y'all said they're going to bring us back on ships with gold and silver and incense. Particular on rebuilding and development. Germany admits nearly wiping out the Herero and Nama tribes during a rebellion against German colonial forces. It is estimated that 65,000 of 80,000 Herero perished between 1904 and 1908, while half. 
got our skulls on display. They still got the bodies of our people on display in their museums. It's unpayable. Try eternity. Yeah, they suck, right? They got to overcome for eternity. Around the same period. In much more recent history, we saw a genocide in Rwanda, born in 1994, over 800. You notice how fast they scroll these pictures, but they don't explain what they are pictures of because you know if you know about it, you would throw a rock at the television. <laughs> Look at this. It's stuck on a loop. They don't even want to play no more. Show you where they went into the stall. Experiment. Mm -hmm. Experimenting on our people. Rebellion against German colonial forces. It is estimated that 65,000 of 80,000 Herrera perished between 1904 and 1908, while half of an estimated 20,000 Nama people died during the same period. In much more recent history, we saw a genocide in Rwanda, where in 1994, over 800,000 people were killed. This past week, during a visit to the nation, France's President Emmanuel Macron stopped short of apologizing, but admitted that France... Stop short of apologizing, but... Oh, like, he's excited. No, but he said this. But he didn't apologize, but he gave you Negroes hope. There's some of the responsibility for the genocide. We bear some of the responsibility for the genocide. It's really your fault. We, I mean, we got a little bit of it. That's what they do to us now. Well, what were you doing that the police officer shot you? You were carrying a candy bar. How was he supposed to know that wasn't a gun? How did he know that that Snickers bar wasn't a lethal weapon? You got to take some accountability. Well, you had a tail light out. How was he not supposed to fill your car with bullet holes? He didn't know if you were going to stop because your brake lights were out. You got to take some accountability for this. So even in the apologies, the apologies is filled with contempt, evil, and double speech. Let's read some more words. When we come back to our homeland, this is how it's going to be. Verse 11, Isaiah 16 and 11. The book of Isaiah, um, chapter, what, what chapter? 60. 60, that's right. And verse 11. Therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. Continually, nitzak. That's one word for continually. Why? Because you, you shut your gates when you are afraid. But when y'all brings us back home, there won't be nothing to fear anymore. You only have to lock your door because of the neighborhood. Somebody might walk in your house. Somebody might steal, kill, or destroy. But you can leave your doors unlocked and even open when you have shalom. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Besides, if they're coming to bring you gold and silver, you need to leave your doors open, right? They might come two in the morning. They're coming a long way, shoot. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that their kings may be brought. Mm -hmm. For the nation For the kingdom. nation and kingdom that would not serve thee shall perish. Again, Hallelujah. for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Yahushua said, those fake Jews, I'm going to make them come and bow and worship before you. And to know that I have loved thee. And if they don't bow and worship, they will be utterly destroyed. Salvation is of the Yahudim. We are the Yahudim. Go ahead. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. Mm -hmm. 
to beautify the place of my sanctuary. Now they go through the forest, they cut down wood, they build whatever they want, but now the best wood is going to be used to rebuild our kingdom. No more building infrastructure for them. They're going to beautify your sanctuary. Go ahead. And I will make the place of my feet glory. These squirrels are going to be off the hook. <laughs> Your host was like, you see my floors? <laughs> you see this? <laughs> the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. What? Shall come bending unto thee. We don't need no fake apologies. Because when Yah does it, they're going to come groveling for what they've done. They're going to come bending. Go ahead, read it. The sons of them, also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending, bending unto thee. thee. And all they that despise thee. They hate us. They have nigga hand festivals. They not only have hands, they have genitals and chocolate. They have lips and chocolate. Making fun of our lips and our anatomy. Because King Leopold cut these things off. They make Belgian chocolate out of these things. And celebrate our humiliation and our demise. Because they're envious. And then they go and get surgery and make their lips bigger. Right. Yeah. The sons of all them that afflicted thee. Shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee. The Chinese too. Yes. That's why we don't need them. Shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy at feet. At the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahuwah. We are the city of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. We are the new Jerusalem. Yes. We are the third temple. The Zion of the Holy One of Yeshua. We are Zion. Zion. That's us. 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, uh -huh. so that no man went through thee, mm -hmm. I will make thee an eternal excellence. Nitzah, eternity. A excellence. A joy. Overcomer. Overcomer. Hashem Yehoshua. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Y'all like milkshakes? Read. <laughs> thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. Mm. And shall suck the breast of kings. When you want some milk in the middle of the night, you got to go to the refrigerator. Yeah. No more. <laughs> you got to go to the refrigerator no more. Let <laughs> me stop. <laughs> go ahead. And thou shalt know that I, Jehovah, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mm. mighty one of Yah. That's how you're going to know that the word of Yah is true. You have to overcome to see these days. Your faith cannot fail. The one that does not overcome, the one that falls away is not worthy to inherit. This is for the overcomers. Go ahead. Verse 17. For brass, I will bring gold. Oh, you want to give a billion dollars? How about 70 million trillion dollars? Mm -hmm. You giving brass, but y'all's going to say, no, you're going to give gold. You tried to bring the least. Now you have to give the greatest. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for wood, brass. You imagine if we had brass cabinets? 
and brass floors and y'all sitting in brass chairs. And for stones, iron. Mm -hmm. I will also make thy officers shalom. Officers, eunuchs. Also, they're going to have great shalom. Go ahead. And thine exactors, righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. What about black on black crime? <laughs> what about black on black crime? The police, well, how do you expect them not to murder you if you murder each other? We ain't going to have none of it no more. Hallelujah. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Hallelujah. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But Yehoah but shall, shall be, be unto, unto thee an everlasting, everlasting light. light. And thy Elohim, thy glory, just like Revelation. Hallelujah. He's going to be the light of the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 The civil war. People were killed. This past week, during a visit to the nation, France's President Emmanuel Macron stopped short of apologizing, but admitted that France bears some of the responsibility for the genocide. For brass, he's going to give us gold. So they can, their little sum apology. Yeah. For doing the least, they're going to have to get the greatest. La France. No. France didn't understand that by wanting to interfere in a regional conflict or a civil war, it was de facto staying by the side of a genocidal regime. By ignoring the alerts from the more lucid observers, France was then bearing a devastating responsibility in a spiral that resulted in the worst, whereas it was trying precisely to avoid it. Like with other European states, France has been trying to repair its relationship with some African nations. While the endeavors may seem noble, some say there's more to it. Africa remains resource rich, and Europe still wants a piece of the pie. At the same time, China is a threat to European powers on the continent as it takes a foothold in Africa. The country has been a key player in Africa's urbanization push, with a large percentage of infrastructure projects being driven by Chinese companies and or by Chinese funding. Many say it's a part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, which aims at strengthening political, economic, and strategic ties with countries in Africa and beyond. China has also been helping the continent with the COVID-19 crisis. China actually has been providing vaccine aid to nearly 40 African nations. Yep, they give the virus and then they give the vaccine. <laughs> we know better. We know better not to trust the heathen. Never trust that enemy. Through donations and sales at favorable prices. Africa is one of the fastest growing regions in the world and everyone wants a part of it. With little negative history. He said, we're selling the vaccine to you at favorable prices. We gave you the back. We gave you the disease for free to begin with. <laughs> we gave that to you for free, and we did even better. We even gave you the vaccine at a favorable rate. Beyond the continent, it's not out of reach for China to win hearts and minds. As for some Europeans, it is critical for them to make up for their colonial pasts if they want to be considered in Africa's future. For RT. I'm Alex Mihailovich. Gerald Hall. You know why this is happening in Africa? Because Yah is waking us up here in America. And because we are Yehuda here, to Yehuda shall be the gathering of the nations. The tribes start to wake up when we wake up. Yehuda wakes up. Then the rest of the tribes start to say, hey, wait a second. Let's go to it. Genesis 49. Yah quote, Genesis 49 and 1. We're in the book of Genesis. That's Bereshit in Hebrew, chapter 49 and verse 1. 
And Yaakov called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves Gather together. Yourselves Here together. you go again. Quahal. That's the gathering and assembly. Go ahead. That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves, Gather yourselves together. together. And hear, ye sons of Yaakov, and hearken unto Yisrael your father. Gather yourselves together. Let's go down to verse 8. Verse 8. Yehuda, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Hold on one second. I'm going to highlight something here. Gather yourselves together, sons of Yaakov, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Yaakov. Okay? Gather yourselves twice. Verse 8, Yehuda. Yehuda, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Uh -huh. Thy hand shall be in the neck or on the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow thy down before thee. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Salvation of the, is of the Yehudim. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yehuda is a lion's whelp. Mm -hmm. From the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rise? In the latter up? days, who's going to rise? Bad enough that that's it. Go ahead. The scepter shall not depart Rulership from Yehuda. Rulership shall not leave Yehuda. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Mm -hmm. Until Shiloh. Shiloh is an act of idiom for the Messiah. And unto him, who is him? Yehuda, Yehuda shall the gathering, the gathering of the people be. be. Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Yaakov. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The impact of Yehuda is felt around the world. And because this old line has been starting to get roused up here in the United States, it's starting to spread. The time of the heathen is starting to wane out. Yehuda as an old line is starting to rise up and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So that means us as Yehudim have to be upright in heart, spiritual, empathetic towards the tribes of Israel, gathering them, showing them love, teaching, building up the nation in 12 tribes. That means us as Yehuda has to come together here in these states here and when we gather ourselves together here watch all the tribes around the world gather together and we become one nation again that means you have to learn your language you have to learn this word you have to learn your culture you have to forsake the world who cares anymore what they think about us? If we're living our culture and we live it according to what the word says, who cares what they think? Who cares? The only one we have to impress is Yah. Who cares? Especially now. You better not do that, dear. You know what they're going to think about you. You know what they're going to say about you. You better, better watch. You know, you know, who cares about that? That coon spirit gotta go. We gotta get rid of the, the betrayers of our people, the Judases. Watch out there. Uh, you know, uh, you know how they feel about you now. Better not get those police upset. They already upset. They're gonna be watching you. 
They were listening on your phone. My phone always showing me what I'm talking about. All the time. I said, man, baby, I'm hungry. I, I, I turn on Google. Here's restaurants in your area. <laughs> <laughs>
Even if we got a burn in this fire, we ain't not worshiping you. Right. And then your host just showed up. Yeah. Isaiah 60 and 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Mm. They shall inherit the land forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got it. 60 and 21? Yeah. Oh, right there. Um, thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Mm -hmm. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. Mm, the I least of Yehoah, us shall become a strong nation. Mm -hmm. I, Yehoah, will hasten it in his time. So it took a while to get here, but once it's here, it's going to happen so fast. It's going to happen so fast before our eyes in this generation. Took a long time to get to this place, but once we there, boom, 61. Verse, um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. The Ruach of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Yehovah hath anointed me to preach the glad tidings. So the glad tidings, the gospel had to be preached to give them hope so that they can nitzak, endure oh, yes. and overcome. Praise Yah. The Ruach of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Yehoah hath anointed me to preach the glad tidings, the gospel, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken Are you broken hearted when you hear this? Yes. Are you broken hearted when you see this? Yes. Are you broken hearted when you feel this? Yes. Are the fake Jews broken hearted? To proclaim liberty. To proclaim liberty to the captives. For the fake Jews captives. No. How can we call them Israel? And the opening. And the opening of the prison. What's the percentage of fake Jewish prisoners in prison? What's the percentages of inmates in prisons who are fake Jews besides Bernie Madoff? That's the only Jew you ever heard going to prison. But we are above 80%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yehovah mm -hmm. and the day of vengeance of our Elohim to comfort all that mourn. We are in mourning. To appoint them. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Zion is us. Said we, the people of Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. A ashes. Beauty for ashes. We've been fasting, supplicating. So for our tribulation through that fire, he's going to beautify the people again. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the ruach of the heaviness. The spirit of heaviness is on us. Depression. 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 He is going to give the garment of praise. Yehuda means praise. To get out of depression, you have to worship Yah. You have to lift his name up. That's what helps us overcome depression of, of the oppression of the heathen. Of our enemies. And the sins of our people. Praise helps us overcome that. The wrongdoing that we face. Go ahead. The garment of praise for the Ruach of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of Yehoah that he might be glorified. And they shall build. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. The hood is going to be beautified. It won't be the hood no more. Detroit, New York. Louisville. Well, Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> Los, LA, 
OKC. Okay, so Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The Bronx. <laughs> Ain't gonna be like that no more. Go ahead. And they, I'm sorry. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Are gonna have to pay back reparations. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have to make good. Go ahead. But ye shall be named the priests but of we Yahweh. Are gonna be the priests of Yah. They can't get intercession. Unless we intercede for them. They can't be forgiven unless we forgive them. They can't be redeemed unless we redeem them. And Yahushua redeems us. That we can be redeemed to the Father. The heathen have to be redeemed by us. And then we have to give the okay to Yahushua and say that one's okay, that one's not. That one's okay, that one's not. You could let him in but not them. We're going to have that power. Just like they do to you when you go to the bank and get a loan. Or that one, but them no. No. All right, that one, but give him, give him a high interest rate so he'll lose it anyway. You know. Oh, you want a job? Yeah, stand online out there. You know. Oh, you're, you're, you're white? Come on inside. Y'all stand outside there. We'll be with you shortly. Oh, sorry, we're closed. Y'all come back tomorrow. We'll see. You know, we'll see. That's how they do us. But ye, professor of history at the University of Houston, he writes, teaches, and thinks about this topic every day of his life. Uh, George Galloway is a former UK MP. So let's talk about this with these two gentlemen. Gerald, I think I have to start with you based on um, your uh, knowledge of this uh, topic. Would you say that what you're seeing is heartfelt by these European nations, or are they simply uh, reading the writing on the wall and seeing that other countries are going into the place that they used to have dominion of? It's certainly the latter. Uh, keep in mind that it's not only China that France and the United States and Britain are worried about. It's also Turkey, which is playing an increasingly significant role in predominantly Muslim areas of Africa, including areas once colonized by France. I'm speaking of the region stretching from Mauritania on the west all the way across the continent through Mali, where France now has troops, through Niger, Chad, etc. Secondly, as your set of piece suggested, Africa is in route to becoming the factory floor of the world. It's not only the fact that China is investing in infrastructure, you also have Chinese entrepreneurs and state-owned corporations who see that wages are rising in China and increasingly they're moving their enterprises into places like Ethiopia. So now, because Chinese wages are starting to rise, they don't want to pay the Chinese like that, just like the United States. They want to pay American workers, so they shipped all their jobs over to China. Now China wants to do that to Africa and Ethiopia. And Ethiopia, being once very set apart, has now become worldly. That's how we know we're near the end. Then I would say that there is a reparations movement. That is to say, the descendants of the African slave trade, such as myself, at court in the United States, along with powerful bodies like the Caribbean community, that is to say, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. and the African Union headquartered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, are pressing the United States and the North Atlantic powers for reparations. And I don't think you can understand what Heiko Maas, the German foreign minister, announced with regard to Namibia without understanding this pressure that is calling for reparations. What did he say? Well, we just said salvation is of the Yehudim, and unto Yehuda shall the gathering of the people be. Because the people here in the United States are crying out for justice and reparations, now our people throughout the four corners of the earth are starting to rise up. This is a worldly professor telling mm -hmm. this. 
<clears throat> However, with regard to Germany, it may be too little, too late, because many of the affected communities in Namibia, that is to say the Nerero people and Nama people who are subjected to genocide, feel that Berlin has not spoken to what they consider to be the critical question, which is land. That is to say, even in 2021, a disproportionately overwhelming percentage of the land in Namibia, which is as large territorially as California and Texas combined, is controlled by descendants of German colonizers, not to mention latecomers from the African community in South Africa. So this issue will continue to percolate, I'm afraid to say. Wow, this sounds like a 10-part series. George Galloway, I want to bring you in here. You are talking to us from the British Isles. As you well know, you may be, or your country may represent, if not being the queen, certainly, if not the king, certainly the queen of uh, colonization. Do you believe that your people today, your country, should somehow give some kind of patriation, repatriation, some kind of assistance to these countries that your descendants colonized? Yeah. Well, if this oh, reparations God. business catches on, Rick, we'll be bankrupt because Germany <laughs> actually is in the He said if this reparation business catches on, we'll be bankrupt. And that's what they're going to be. Hallelujah. They're going to be made bankrupt because y'all said so. Ellie Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, if not the king, certainly the queen of uh, colonization. Do you believe that your people today, your country, should somehow give some kind of patriation, repatriation, some kind of assistance to these countries that your descendants colonized? Watch his face. Classic. Because Germany actually was only an African colonial power between its formation in about 1870 until its defeat in the First World War in 1918. While Britain was colonizing uh, a third of the world for centuries. Mm. And I'm with the professor on this. Uh, I'm entirely cynical about these apologia that we are now being treated to. As the professor said, and I'll give you the number, 80% of Namibian land, now 30 years after our liberation, is still owned by Germans. 80% of an African country. If you begin to calibrate the looting of Africa, carried out by the United Kingdom, by France, perhaps most brutally and uh, uh, licentiously uh, by the Belgians, imagine, little Belgium owned... Belgium who cut off the hands of our people for not producing rubber fast enough. The Congo killed 10 million African people in the Congo. And now, outlook being brought up as a Catholic, Rick, we had a very bad attitude to Africa. We were told to uh, give a penny for black babies. Uh, we were told that Africa was a basket case. Turns out Africa is a treasure trove, and now everyone wants a piece of it. But these former colonial powers are carrying the albatross around their neck of the great crimes that they committed in Africa in centuries gone by. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. Jeremiah 16. <laughs> Jeremiah 16. Jeremiah 16 and 16. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16 and verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Yehoah, and they shall fish them. And we I are the fishers preaching the gospel. Yehoshua sent the apostles and disciples disciples as fishers of men. 
Yahushua constantly fed the flocks and the multitude with fish and bread. But in the latter days, he's not fishing no more. He's sending hunters to hunt the hunter. Esau the hunter shall be hunted. First it was fishing. It was peaceful. A lake, a stream, a boat and a hook. You know? Then it's going to be hunting. Fire. Go ahead. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Yehoah, and they shall fish them, and after I will send for many hunters. Many hunters. Not, not a few, many. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Who mm. lives in the mountains and rocks, y'all? Mm -hmm. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. Mm. <laughs> they are not hid from my face. God has seen it. He didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Because we had to overcome and endure, but he's using our endurance to test the heathen at the same time. So what they meant for evil, y'all meant for good. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. Amen. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and I their sin I will recompense double. their iniquity and their sin double. Reparations. Rep recompense. Go ahead. Because they have defiled my land. Yisrael, Jerusalem, Africa. They have filled my inheritance with carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Yehoah, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. When the day of affliction comes, we get to hide under the wings, the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. That's what they're saying right now on the news. Did you hear it? They're going to have to pay. And they don't have enough to pay us. Like Sister Lee said, she said, um, he's saying we can't afford to pay them back. If they, if we got it, was a person. So she <laughs> said, when he said, when he right. said his face, if we got it, was right. a person. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, verse 20. Mm, that's good right there. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Verse 20. Shall a man make Elohim until himself, and they are no Elohim? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, mm -hmm. and they shall know that my name is Jehovah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You're right. Uh your perspective on this. This is a really fascinating story. I think um, uh, I think you can expect that we're going to be spending a whole lot more time looking into this, because I think it's mm -hmm. one of the things that all citizens of the world should focus on. My thanks to you both. That's right. The awakening of the children of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Thanks again. Hallelujah. 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 Right. Uh, Shabbat Shalom again, family. Um, are we going to uh, have Q&A today? Yes. yes. And uh, I wanted you to mention at the beginning uh, the immersion okay. and soul tie break-in okay. weekend All right. for August. Tell them that first. All right, family. Um, well, so, let's say a prayer and seal okay, this uh, information. Yeah, right. Blessed be thy name, Yehoah Elohim. Yehoah my Elohim. Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah our Elohim. Modi Manachnu Lukai, we give thanks unto you. Yehovah Adonai, we give thanks unto Yehovah Adonai, Lakol Devarim, for all things. Thank you for giving us the word of the Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you for giving us the 
good, the glad tidings, the holy gospel, whereby we may know to overcome most high, to endure until the end that we might have everlasting life, that we might have victory. For you are the victorious one, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And if we abide in you, you shall abide in us and we shall be made uh, uh, part of the kingdom of heaven. We ask forgiveness, pardon for our sins, transgressions, and iniquity. And we pray, Most High Yah, that you would wash us with the blood of the Lamb. We pray that you pour the oil of joy over us, Most High, for, uh, for the spirit of um, oppression and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Most High, give us beauty for ashes, O Heavenly yeah. Father. Lift our heads up, Most High. And, and, and redeem your people, Most High, and let them know that you are true and your word is true and that you are our Savior, our Elohim and our King. Let them know that the gods that they have worshipped and they worship themselves and they worship Satan and they worship gold and silver and things that shall not profit. Let them know that you are the true and only Elohim and you shall redeem your people, Yisrael, for Most High, your people are called by thy name. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And pray you would write these words in our heart. Yeah. Teach us your word, yes. your law, statutes, and commandments, yes. and the faith of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Yes. Teach us our language, the people, Most High. Yes. Teach us our culture. Teach us, yes. Most High, not to be ashamed. Yes. For thy servant, Paulos, the apostle, said, I shall not be ashamed for the gospel. Yes. We won't be ashamed of our heritage. Yes. We won't be ashamed of your word. We won't be ashamed of your name. Yes. We shall not be ashamed of our families. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Mm -hmm. Write these words in our heart. Bless us in the week to come and guide us by the Ruach HaKodesh. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right, family. Um, uh, just a reminder, again, um, we did have um, a comment um, or two in regards to the upcoming event that's going to be um, in August. So it's going to be August the 19th, 20th, 21st, and the 22nd. Um, it's going to be a Breaking Soul Ties and Immersion Weekend. Um, so we're asking that anyone that is um, interested in attending the event to send us an email. Um, we have received um, several uh, people that are interested in attending. We have your information. Um, we're compiling it all together in one place. Space is limited, so you have to go ahead and send in that information now because we're making plans. Space is limited, um, and it is coming up quickly. Um, give us your information if you're interested because next week, y'all willing, we're going to be starting our Zoom meetings. We're going to be meeting with everyone before meeting in person, and we're going to be doing that privately. Okay, we're going to get to know everyone who's coming and everyone's going to get to know us before you come. And we will uh, have some exercises that we will do as a, as a family and as a body to prepare for the breaking of these soul ties so that when we're gathered, everything is in place, then y'all can lift off these spirits from off of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so um, in your emails, do include how many family members are planning to attend. Um, and as Jediah said, um, in the upcoming days, uh, Yah willing, we will be reaching out to you all. So if you haven't already um, sent an email with the information of who, how many people plan to attend, um, do send your emails and go ahead and download. Um, are we going Google Meets. Yes. Um, go ahead and download Google Meets. Um, to your devices because Google Meets is the platform that we will be using to speak with and to meet everyone. And space is limited, so let's act fast. Yes, um, and we will be in touch with you soon. Praise God. Um, do you want me to do the books now or what should I do? You can um, yeah. do it later. Oh, okay. do it quickly. Okay, all right. So just a reminder before we do the Q&A, um, after Shabbat, after sundown, you can go to the library and um, add to your collection. Uh, we have the His Word Gold Edition that we read from regularly um, with all the names translated back to their original Hebrew names. Pictures of us. This book is written for us, by us, to us. Um, 
So it is a very must have for um, your understanding of who we are as a people. For those learning Hebrew, we have two selections. We have the Testament of Yahshua, which is in Hebrew and English. It's the four Gospels and Revelations. And we also have um, the book and the secrets of Enoch, which is books one and two of Enoch. And it's in uh, Hebrew and English as well. You can only find both of these actually um, here. Amen. Toda Yehoah. And you can only find this one here too. <laughs> um, I think his work concorded to name book for any of you guys seeking uh, for a name. We've been learning a lot from this um, recently with uh, prophecies based on the names being translated um, from Hebrew and then put together. We have also have the Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles, very profound read. This is the stories and the lives and the walks of the apostles when they were on the earth and the crosses that they had to bear for Yahushua's name's sake. Very, very profound book, family. And then we have, by our very own son, Jedi Malek II, Joseph, the lost prince of Israel. This is for the youth of Israel by for Hebrews by Hebrews. Um, and the artwork is beautiful. The story is beautiful. You can spend time with your children and teach them from uh, the youth's perspective of Joseph's life. Amen. And then last but not least, family, we have the Enoch calendar, the Amen. first, the official, the only true calendar for 2021 and 2022. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful, as a lot of you guys, I'm sure, are aware of, the ones that have ordered and has it to your house. Um, it's got all the feast days, so you're up to date on whenever the feasts are going to be. The Maserot, the um, martyrdoms of the apostles, the months in Hebrew and in English. And, of course, you know that um, you're not going to get anything here without getting the word. So you have the word through Amen. Now. Hallelujah. 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 All right, so we will move forward to Q&A. Yes. Praise God. Well, all right. So Sister Idia says, my question has nothing to do with the lesson today. Okay, go ahead. But more to what I've seen in Israel. What is going on with Israel? Why is there so much hostility nowadays against one another? Uh, let's go to Jeremiah 23. That's a very good question. That's a very, very good question. Yeah. Jeremiah 23, let's start at verse 1. All right. We are in the book of Jeremiah. That's Jeremiah who? In Hebrew, chapter 23, beginning at verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, Read it again. Read it again. Mm -hmm. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, saith Yehoah. Some of these elders and teachers are called by Yah, and some of these elders and teachers are called by man. Go ahead. Therefore, saith Yehoah Elohim of Yisrael against the pastors, that feed my people. Mm, against them. Go ahead. Ye have scattered my flock mm. and driven them away. Mm -hmm. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the mm -hmm. evil of your doings. This is what we're Jehovah. starting to see. The elders who have divided and scattered the sheep, they're going to be held accountable. Yah has given a short period of grace now. But that time of grace, I think, is starting to wane out. We're coming into a new era of the awakening. We're starting to come into a new era of the awakening. Many people have been allowed to run to and fro and say all kinds of stuff, make doctrine, and there's been no real consequence. So we're going to come into a time of unity, and the unity is going to help come about because of consequence. 
When there are consequences, you can't just say and do whatever you want. This actual Torah that we speak of, laws, statutes, and commandments, that many of the elders don't want to adhere to. They pick and choose. Go ahead. Verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock mm -hmm. out of all countries, whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up. And I will set up shepherds mm -hmm. over them, which shall feed He's them. He's going to set up, in these last days, in these coming times, his truly called ones. And they shall fear no more. And they more. shall fear no more, because... When you are trying to stand for righteousness as a teacher, they're going to come against you. You're going to have to stand alone. They're going to have think tanks against you, all kinds of stuff to discourage you. Whatever your calling is, when you're walking in the, 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 the power of the calling that Yah has given you, you're going to have those who are not called by your Yah coming against you. And that causes division. We still got so-called elders teaching Jesus Christ. Knowing his name is your Yahshua. <coughs> knowing we just read in Revelation um, that the church of Philadelphia was commended because they have kept the word and have not denied the name. Mm -hmm. We still have certain elders saying you ain't got to do this law. You ain't got to keep these feasts. You ain't got to do this. You ain't got to do that. You don't got to do the law. You don't got to believe in Paul. You don't got to do this. You can, you can, you don't got to believe in Enoch. Oh, yeah. You just, that's what I was saying. <laughs> and they're going to be moved out the way. Mm -hmm. Unless they repent. Right. Mm -hmm. Neither be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith Jehovah. Mm hmm Behold, the days come, saith Yehoah, that I will raise unto Dawid a righteous branch. HaMashiach. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days. In his days, Yehuda shall be saved. Amen. And Yisrael shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yehoah our righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another reason. Let's start at verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. A lot of the elders are into adultery. Some of them stealing people's wives. We've seen it all. Go ahead. These are some of the biggest, quote unquote, elders and congregations in Israel. For the land is full of adulterers, mm -hmm. for because of swearing the land mourneth. Mm -hmm. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet. For both prophet and priest are profane. How many elders do you say cur see cursing with the word of Yah in their hand mm. and the name of Yah in their lips? Mm -hmm. Profane. This is assemblies and camps. Profane. Right. Mm -hmm. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith Yahweh. And they do it in the house of Yah. Let's go down to verse 13. No, you know what? Let's keep reading. Go ahead. Okay. 12. All right. Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. Mm -hmm. They shall be driven on, driven on be and fall rolled therein. Rolled over. The Father's going to roll them over. They're going to be tread down. For I will bring evil upon this them. This is what we're seeing. Even the year of their visitation, saith Yahweh. The year of the visitation of their false elders is coming. And the people who prop up wicked elders. It's not just a lot of the elders, but a lot of the people love evil. This is what I've said before. Uh, how can I say it? Religion 
Which being intellectual but not religious. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you have those who walk in spirit and in truth. Where they can go and fellowship anywhere. And to some degree, they might be ostracized. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you have others who gather based on the sins that their elders tolerate. That's what determines what congregation you go to. There's some who will really walk in spiritual who will go anywhere. And then there's others who go based with their particular sins are tolerated. Well, I'll go here because I can't be hearing about this and I don't, you know, you know, I'm head of this household. So you got some congregations will go People go to a congregation because they let the women usurp the authority over the men. Mm -hmm. So they'll go there. you got some congregations where the men are profane and they treat their women like trash. So you know what? I think I like this congregation. Mm -hmm. I don't want this woman saying anything to me. She don't know anything. She's good for nothing. She's stupid and this and this, 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 this and that. You know? Then you'll have some man... Man, these man, you know, these people over here, man. Oh man, I, this, see that sister over here? I like that, man. See what she got on? Ooh, ooh. See what that brother's wearing? Oh man, I like. Oh, wow. Because their elders are fornicators, and they don't really come down on fornication like that. They're real loose about talking about those types of things. Some, you know what? Oh man, this this congregation is. They doing it big. You know, oh man, you see the elder? He got this big house. He's living like this. And see the car he's wearing? You see all this, 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 and that? And some people will go there because they're idolaters. And then they go there because of what the person or the people are wearing. You see their garments in that congregation? Oh man, I want to, oh, man. I want to go to this congregation because of how they dress. Not what's in the heart, not what they're preaching, how they dress, the outer man. Those are idolaters and men pleasers. So, and then there's those who worship in spirit and in truth, and they can go anywhere. But sometimes they find contention when they speak on these types of sins. So Jehovah said earlier in there, He's going to raise up his own pastors and they won't have to be afraid anymore because some people see the evil but they're afraid to say anything because they're going to be attacked. They're going to be hated. They're going to be persecuted. They're going to be isolated. They're going to be disassociated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, she had a second part to that question. Um, but I think you kind of touched it a little bit. She said, why is there so much disdain towards the sisters? Mm. Is it being taught, if she said, it is being taught in camps? No, is it being taught in the camps and assemblies? I understand a woman has her place, but goodness. The disdain comes from Laban. Jacob, Raquel, and Leah kept fighting each other and arguing with each other because someone else sowed discord in their marriage and in their families. So, until they realized that, there was bitterness between the battle of the sexes, between men and women. So, this society has elevated our women above our men. So we come into the truth. Brothers realize that this is not righteous. Some become angry. Some become bitter. Some have an understanding heart. Some have no problem with it. Some have no problem with these things. Disorder in the household and so forth. So based on whatever perspective that person is coming into the truth from, determines the, the stance that they take against uh, the opposite sex. How much you've been conditioned by the society mixed with your awakening without proper understanding. 
hating your sisters because of the evil that you see them do without full understanding of how it got to where it's gotten to. Right. Hating your brothers because of the evil that you've seen them do, but not understanding how they've gotten to where they've gotten. Causing us to fight and hate each other and have a disdain against the opposite sex because that is the programming that the heathen have placed upon us. This is the sorcery that they've placed on our minds. And the only antidote and remedy is this word. But some people take pieces of this word. Right. We have to take the bitter and the sweet of the word, and then that gives the healing. Some men want uh, authority over the sisters, but they don't want to uh, protect. They don't want to provide. They don't want to teach. They don't want to work. But they want the authority associated with that. Some women come into the truth and they want to usurp authority. And then if they can't usurp authority, then they don't want to be in a relationship. So then they become bitter and they say, I'll be single and alone. And then this causes the division between the sexes, not understanding that this was set up by Satan and the heathen. And until you come to that understanding we have this disconnect. So, true elders have to point the sins out in the men. True elders have to point the sins out in the women. And then true elders have to show the remedy. The remedy. But there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of views to be made off of keeping people in that cycle. So you have a lot of elders and teachers who keep these people in this cycle because it's profitable for their pocket. It's profitable for their viewership. We used to teach on the sins of the men and the sins of the women quite frequently. But if it's not received because of the bitterness of the people's heart or the hardness of this heart. The best way to teach it is to just be a living example. Well, I don't teach on marriage as much as I try to live it and let that be the example. Thereby, I'm not arguing anymore. But Yah says, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. We do have done that majorly. And we've been ostracized from many yeah. elders in Israel for doing these things. But look at the work Yah has called us to do. So now more so than just speaking against these things, which we still do, it's better to just show leadership. I'm not going to argue with anybody about what my family should look like, because it's my family. If you and your family want it to look a certain way, then you do that. I'm not going to argue with you and tell you you're wrong as long as it's lawful. Hallelujah. So we're leading by example. I'm not going to argue with people about what Lashawan, Kadash, and all of that stuff. I'm going to put Hebrew on the screen, and then we're going to teach from the Hebrew itself. Hallelujah. And that will show who was lying about the language and who wasn't. So these are things that you have to understand that sometimes you have to pull away. Enoch would pull away. So when there's too much chaos on social media, you have to pull away and then you have to dive into spending time with the Father and spending time reading the word for yourself. And then when you do that and understand that you can't change people, people have to want change. You can change yourself. When you change yourself, then y'all can bless you. I've worked on changing myself. I just had this conversation yesterday. I work on cultivating my spirit 
and my walk without so much worrying about pleasing man. I seek to please Yah. Because when you please Yah, you'll find favor with him and with man. And I seek to walk in my gifts and the talents he has given me as he's given us all gifts and talents. And that will tend to speak louder than anything I can say. I can make a million videos about the evil in Israel. And I have. And people, many of them continue to still teach evil. And now we're at the state where we are, which is what we said years ago. If these people are allowed to continue to do what they do, they're going to destroy and divide this nation. You're going to have chaos amongst the people. You're going to have division amongst the men and the women. And we said these things and we're told we were haters. We were told what else? We were, uh, huh? Sexist. Sexist. Misogynist. Misogynist. Yeah. Uh, homosexual. Uh, what else? Uh, 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 a Jedi, like a you know, uh, 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 like a magician, for, for for trying to teach the language and tell people we need to learn our our heritage. Um, woman hater. Yeah. Um, I hate women. Married. Ask my wives if I. Got two wives. <laughs> two happy wives. Not just two wives, two happy wives. Hallelujah. Um, I, I mean, I, I can say a lot. I can tell you about a lot of these elders and these walks who are not sincere. And a lot of people who keep the people in a carnal state of mind instead of elevating them in the spirit. Because in a carnal condition that they have, they can exploit it. A lot of our people are being exploited and don't realize it. Just because people say Yah and say we believe we're Israelites doesn't mean they're not exploiting you. I can I can do a lot. I have said a lot. And now, years later, mm -hmm. look, it's come to pass. Hallelujah. But now, you know, um, we were ostracized for saying these things, but now look at where the state of the nation is. But I can say for this ministry that uh, when all of this confusion and chaos is going around Israel right now, I can say this ministry has grown forward in the, in the room. I can say that it's produced fruit that is unlike any other ministry. Not because we are good, but because Jehoshua is good. And if you seek to make yourself a, a willing vessel for him to use, he can do miracles. This stuff here should have been done by teams and teams and teams of people. Just like the Assembly of Philadelphia, he said, you have a little strength. You have not, you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. So because of these things, I'm going to open doors for you that no one else can shut. We have people trying to shut the Hebrew Israelite scriptures down, Israelites. And they try to tell our people to prefer the C4, heathens work other over that which was Israel's right. for Israel. Did they prosper? No. no. Did it, was it a stumbling block? Yes. yes. It was a stumbling block that God helped us get over. So when you are faced with persecution, the uncertainty of how our people is, the division and chaos, do you pour yourself more into Yah? Do you separate? Do you pull yourself back when you need to? To spend time alone with Yah? You have to come to the understanding and realization that you can only change yourself. I can't change anybody else but myself. And then I can be an example of what the scriptures is preaching about. And that can influence people more so than speaking. Look at the people who only teach on Esau. Whenever you speak on race, you're going to get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of views. And some ministries, that's all they will ever talk about. We talk about it as we did today. We talk about reparations, but we also talk about the Ruach. We talk about our language. We talk about Hebrew. We talk about our culture. We talk about the feast. We talk about the calendar. We talk about now we show about marriage, 
we, we talk about how to overcome. We talk about breaking spiritual strongholds, demonic chains. We talk about immersion. We talk about all of these things. Some people only talk about Esau and Deuteronomy 28. Because that keeps the people stuck. And if they keep you stuck there, then they could exploit you. Because they know those topics will get a lot of views. And I talk about who we are as Yehuda. I talk about uh, that the, the children of Israel are black. And, and not apologetic about that. But if that's all you have to teach, if all you have to teach week after week after week is that the children of Israel are black, who are you trying to convince? Once I tell you who you are, do I need to tell you who you are every day? Or then do I have to start talking about what you have to do because of who you are? Right. Now that you know who you are, this is what we have to do. Not just this is who you are, this is who you are. This is who you are, this is who you are. You know this person is black, you know that person is black. Yes, they are. But if that's all you have to offer your people, then you're really probably not called to teach. A priest's job in the Old Testament was to teach them the law, to teach them prophecy, to teach them the building of the, the temple, the offerings, the sacrifices, dreams and visions, healing of the people, the sick, the leprous. There was law, statute, and command. They had to marry people. How many people are married? How many congregations are marrying people? How many people are they bringing together in marriage? How many ceremonies, wedding ceremonies, have they done? Or are all the people in their congregation single? Or if they're married, there's an imbalance, a gross imbalance in a relationship. I hope that gives some perspective. All right, next question. And now Yisrael says, is the lunar solar calendar part of the Enoch calendar? Enoch is a solar, lunar, I should say, constellation, which means the stars. It, it is the sun, moon, and stars. Let's go to Genesis 1. This is why the other calendars will always be incorrect. Genesis 1, let's start at verse 14. All right. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning at verse 14. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let and let, it, and let them let them and plural, let them be for signs, signs and for seasons, seasons and for days, days and, and for years. years. So first and foremost, he put lights plural. If you're just going off of the moon, you're off. If you just go off of the sun, you're off. If you just go off of the stars, you're off. Most people that I know of who don't use the Enoch calendar go off of the lunar, which he created lights, plural, mm -hmm. not just the moon, for signs, for seasons, for days and years. Verse 15. Verse 15. And let them, them. be for lights mm -hmm. in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And it was so. And he made two great lights, the greater to rule the day. The sun. And the lesser to rule the night. The moon. He made the stars the also. The stars. If your calendar does not incorporate the sun, the moon, and the stars, it is off. 
The only calendar that can do that is the Enoch calendar. Hallelujah. All right. Um, Ahava Walters asks, people use 1 Corinthians 11 and 14 to say that men should not wear long hair, whether it be loose or as locks. Is it wrong for a man to have long hair? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 11 and 13. Let's read it. First Corinthians eleven and fourteen. Doth not nature? We're gonna read a verse two down, and that gives it the right perspective. Where would you like me to start? Verse fourteen. Okay. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse fourteen. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair? It is a shame unto him. Verse 16. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. Huh? <laughs> but if any huh? man seem to be contentious, we have no such huh? custom. <laughs> but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. There's a natural man and there's a spiritual man. So, let's say a man having locks. What's the reason for his locks? Samson had locks. Mm -hmm. Nazarites had locks. They couldn't cut their hair. Mm -hmm. So, if you have hair for spiritual reasons, really there's nothing to worry about. There's no custom saying you can't. But if you like Absalom... Mm. <laughs> and you luxurious with your hair and you over vanity over you know your vein as a man about your long flowing hair there's a problem nature itself will teach you that's wrong hope that gives the clarity oh, yeah. Yeah. all right logic 16 11 shalom says, question would this situation of all these other nations having alleged ownership of 97% of the continent of Africa explain why it is impossible to find an accurate map that is at least 500 years old? Um, well, uh, well, let's see. Let's go to Daniel 11. Why is it? Why isn't it possible to find a map that's accurate? Mm -hmm. Mm Let's go with verse 39. There's a couple of verses we can go to. Okay. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 39. Mm -hmm. That's Daniel okay. in Hebrew. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds. Sorry. Let's, let's start up a little bit okay. um, above. Let's do 36. All right. Verse 36. This is like the anti-Messiah, the spirit of wickedness that rules on the earth. Go ahead. And the king shall do according to his He's will. Do as I will. He's going to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Do as I will shall be the whole the law. Abaddon, Satan, Baphomet, you name it. Go ahead. And he shall exalt himself. Pride. And magnify himself. Above. Gay pride, homosexual. Homo means self, the same. Sexual means, you know, intercourse. Uh, homosexual means to love yourself, which that's Satan. He loved himself above all others. Yehoshua was the opposite. He loved everyone else before himself. Go ahead. And magnify himself above every Elohim. He's going to magnify himself because of pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and shall speak marvelous things against the Elohim of Elohim, and, and shall, shall prosper, prosper for a little bit. Indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. All right. Go ahead. Neither shall he regard, regard the Elohim of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any Elohim, for he shall magnify himself above all. Let's go down to 39. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange Elohim, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall, and shall divide, divide the, the land, land for gain. gain. So you can't find an accurate map because they've divided our land and they've divided Africa for gain. So they've divided it contrary to the way Yah has done so, so that they could steal, kill, and destroy. So they can steal the resources, everything we talked about today. And not only did they just change the boundaries of the lands, they've changed the names of the lands and the names of the people. They've changed the languages. So this is why. Because you have this evil spirit of anti-Mashiach come in exalting itself above everything that y'all did and just doing it for gain. I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Question? All right. <clears throat> Queen Hadassah 7 says, are the scriptures that can tell a woman with her, she can be married again after divorce or not. Say that again. Are, are there, it's supposed to be are there scriptures. Mm -hmm. um, are there scriptures that can tell a woman with her, she can be married again after divorce or not? A woman with her? Can she can be married again? Or not? Okay. Basically, can a woman be remarried is what she's asking? Yeah, I can. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's circumstantial. So let's go to, uh, again, 1 Corinthians 7. There's certain circumstances. If she was married in the truth, then she shouldn't be divorced unless the husband dies. If she was married in the world and she comes into the truth, and a spouse doesn't want to come in the truth, then she can be divorced. Uh, Eleven. All right. First Corinthians seven. Let's start at ten. First Corinthians, chapter seven, beginning at first. 10. And unto the married I commend, yet not I, but Adonai. Let, Let not, not the, the wife, wife depart, depart from, from her husband. husband. She shouldn't depart from her husband when a woman is married. Go ahead. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. If she is, she should be single until she can try to reconcile. Sometimes some people might need space. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Or be reconciled to her husband. Or be reconciled to her husband. Go ahead. And let not the husband put away husband his wife. Husband should be trying to put away his wife. Go ahead. But to the rest speak I, not Adonai. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Mm -hmm. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be oh. pleased, did, did we read 11? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we passed over. That's the main part of my okay. point. But, and if she's the part, uh, okay, let's not, yeah, we did that. Go ahead. Uh -huh. When we start at 12? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, verse 12. But to the rest speak oh, I. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 15. 15, all right. 14, 14 and 15, go ahead. All right. Verse 14, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. 
But if the unbelieving depart, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Let him depart. So if you're married to somebody and you're in the truth and your spouse is not, and they leave you and they depart or what have you, then that's lawful for you to be remarried. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. You're not under bondage in such a case like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Elohim has called us unto Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, that answers the question. Mm -hmm. You can't remarry under certain circumstances. In the old law, in, the, in, in Deuteronomy 24, it says, let's go to it. If there is going to be a divorce, it should be a, 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 a bill of divorcement associated with it. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, Zebarim in Hebrew, chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness. The only reason that a man should seek to be divorced is if he is found in uncleanness in her. Yehoshua identified this uncleanness in Matthew 19, the uncleanness is fornication. He said a man should not put away his wife except for fornication. fornication. So the uncleanness has to be something to do with fornication then it is lawful for a divorce and we he write her a bill of divorcement um, and give it her give it in her hand and send her out of his house right that's the only instance when you know it should be because of fornication um, I have a question that goes along yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. So is there um, a such thing as um, a physical form of fornication and a spiritual form? There is a there's a there's a physical form of fornication and there's a spiritual form of fornication. Um so that's when it can kind of get a little bit tricky. You know, because there can be uh uh adultery of the heart. And then some people can take that as far as to say, okay, well, non-submission. Well, who are you submitting to? Whoever you submit to is who is your head. And then they may say, well, that is adultery. And then that may be grounds for divorce, depending on the severity of it. You know, so it's, it, ha it shouldn't be a trigger-happy thing, but it should be something that, you know, should be consulted with elders and it has to be substantial evidence and patience and long suffering and time for repentance and so forth and so on. But yeah, there is adultery of the heart. So, you know, I hope that answers the question. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to read this. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a question, it, it was a statement. Um, and then somebody commented, I'll read both of them. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal says, I'm new here. And I was, I was told y'all teach hate. <laughs> I've been following y'all because I want to know for myself. Should we ask who it was that taught that? Is that not important? Yeah, it's not important. But someone that watches us, and she hasn't been watching for um, a very long time, but she's been watching for um, some time. Dream Sky Lover says, welcome at Crystal. I'm fairly new too. But Jediah's teachings are solid. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from this channel. Hallelujah. All right, and then, um, let's see. All right. Questions? Um, okay, I got one. Um, Zephaniah Yahoo says, are we, are we prohibited to marry Hamites since Abraham and some of our forefathers intermarried with them? The only time it's lawful is if that person serves the Most High Yah. 
So let's look at an example of that. Um, uh, numbers. Mm. Numbers 12. Verse 1. The book of Numbers, that's Ben Midbar in Hebrew, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. And Miriam and Aharon spoke against Moshe because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. When you read uh, about Moshe's wife in the book of Yashir, Joshua, it tells you that she fear yeah she was on the level of um sarah, uh, sarah um in her faith and in her walk also joseph's wife asnif mm -hmm. we've read the story of joseph and asnif she was on the level of sarah and rebecca leah and raquel she was a, a mitzrim she was an egyptian so yah says that you're supposed to uh receive the stranger mm -hmm. and that when you receive the stranger you're supposed to have one law so these are indeed strangers who serve the most high Yah, and they were accounted within the nation of israel okay um let's go to deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomim. You're not supposed to hate an Edomim, an Edomite. For he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor a Mitzrayim. A Mitzrayim is an Egyptian. Because thou wast the stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of Yehoah in their third generation. By the time, yeah, of the third generation, if they want to dwell with our people, they're no longer even called an Egyptian or an Edomite anymore. They call it Israelite. By the third generation, it's a good Torah. That's by the great grand, the great grand. Mm -hmm. Or grands that they might say grand or great grand generation. Mm -hmm. Third grand. Third generation. Yeah. Grandchildren. Children. Great grandchildren. Great 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 grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Third. You have the person. Their mm -hmm. their children. Their child. Mm -hmm. And then their child's child. Grand, 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 grand. grand. Right. Right. So great grand. So by that they're not even you can't even really call them an Edomite anymore. Or else, uh within our people, that's how because I've seen people Misteach. Let's say uh, a slave master raped somebody's matriarch right. in the 1700s. They say, okay, a white man raped you, such and such and such, such. Then that means you always white and then all that person. Always, That's not the Torah. Mm -hmm. And they say, you are what your father is. You are what your father is. You are what your mm -hmm. father is. Under most circumstances. Under other circumstances, if by the third generation, that's the great grand, and they're still amongst our people, that's not considered an Israelite. That's the Torah. But that's by, like, you know, the third generation. Okay? All right. Um, Natasha Irizarry asks, um, does it matter what kind of fringes we wear? Um, are we given instructions on how to make them pertaining to how many groups or styles, etc.? No, um, where's the commandment for fringes numbers? Uh, uh, where is that? Can somebody still stay off of me? Number 
Deuteronomy? Where? Well, I don't know if that's if the one they're looking for, though. No, what, what, where you at? Um, Deuteronomy um, 22. Deuteronomy 22. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 22. And 12. And 12. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. Okay. Here's the thing. If you have a garment with four quarters, you can have like this. This has corners on it. So on the corners, there's a fringe. I'm wearing a dress shirt. If my dress shirt is tucked in, this is why I wear this. So that I have fringes on in this manner. That's one way of wearing it. Okay, another way is if you have four corners, literally, then you can have four fringes hanging off the, each corner of your garment. If you have a t-shirt that doesn't have corners, it could be around the border. Because four corners is also an idiom, like the four corners of the earth. That just means the whole earth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to gather you from the four corners of the earth. Right. North, east, south, and west, meaning from all over. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can have it around the entire border. Mm -hmm. It is lawful. All right, and Brandon Blackwell asks, can you provide scriptures that backs polygamy? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> Where should I start? The one of the provisions for taking a second life. Okay, uh, that is Exodus. Twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Exodus 22. Um, okay, we're getting scriptures on polygamy. Exodus 21 and 10. We're in the book, of the, the book of Exodus, that's Shemot in Hebrew, chapter 21 and verse 10. If, 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 not you have to, not you don't have to, if, if is a what? Uh, statue. If is a statue. A, a law is thou shalt, thou shalt or thou shalt not. If leaves it up to your discretion, that's a statute. A commandment, thou shalt, thou shalt not. Commandments are something you have to do. Right? Yes. A statute is something that is up to your discretion. It's optional. If he take him. If he take him another wife, her oh. food, her raiment, I'm sorry. and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. If a man takes him another wife, he's still supposed to feed her, take her on dates, buy her clothes, and, you know, uh, perform the duty of marriage. Go ahead, 11. And if he do not these three unto her, then she shall go out free without money. Without money. So uh, that is the law concerning that. I mean, there is, is you know, we can go in um, First King. I mean, First Samuel, no, Second Samuel's. We can go First and Second Samuel. Let's go to First Samuel. I mean, it's from other places. Um, let's go to First Samuel's one. Let's go 1 Samuel 1, 1. We're in the book of 1 Samuel. Mm -hmm. That's Shemuel, Rishon, 
chapter 1, verse 1. Now, there was a certain man of Ramatayim, Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elquanah. Elquanah is jealous. Go ahead. Elquanah. The son of Yorokam, mm -hmm. the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, Zephu. Zuf. Zuf. Mm. Yeah, Zuf. And Ephratim. And Ephraimite. And Ephratim. Go ahead. And he had two wives. Okay, thank you. Maybe that one in Bartholomew. Yeah, that's, that's that, that goes really in Bartholomew. All right, go to Bartholomew. I was trying not to go here. <laughs> Why? That's not good for the I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, sometimes people need time to digest yeah. these things. Yeah. Or just put an exclamation mark on it. It's like so, just like starting a sentence with the exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're in the it's uh, chapter five and eight. Mm -hmm. We're in the book of um, Bartholomew, um, Besserot, Bartholomew. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5 and verse 8. And Yehoshua said, It is good if he that is immersed present his immersion blameless. Go ahead. But if the lust of the flesh come upon him, he ought to be the husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. The married, if they are good and pay tithes, will receive a hundredfold. A second marriage is lawful. These words are actually read in the updated edition of the Hebrew Life Scriptures. You know, they're, at they're the read beginning. at, this yep. at mm -hmm. the beginning of verse 8. It says, And Yehoshua said, right. mm -hmm. um, A second marriage is lawful on condition Conditional of the, statute of the diligent performance of good works mm -hmm. and due payment of tithes. Mm -hmm. But a third marriage is reprobated and virginity is better. But there's prophecy in the last days that there will actually be seven mm -hmm. women for one man. So I guess it, I guess it, I don't know. But there's prophecies about that happening at some point as well. So I hope that, you know, this can, can give some clarity. And you have Yehoshua's words himself speaking on this, um, you know. But if you need more, we can, we can give more. Unless they're satisfied with the answer. All right. Sister Gladys Wilson. Shalom. Shalom asks, why did Yaakov wrestle with an angel? Okay, let's go to Galatians. No, Romans. Let's go to Romans 10. Hmm. Actually, it might be First Corinthians ten. Romans 8. Hmm. Romans 8. Let's start at verse 5. All right. We are in the book of Romans. That's Romim, chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Ruach, the things of the Ruach. This represents 
Yaakov's evolution from Yaakov to Yisrael. Yaakov represents the carnal man. Yisrael represents the spiritual man. The carnal man, the flesh, wrestles against Yah. Excuse me, wrestles against Yah all the time. And Yaakov was in a place of great fear in his life because Esau was coming to destroy him. And sometimes when you are at your most vulnerable is when you have to make a decision whether you're going to follow the flesh or follow the spirit. Go ahead. <clears throat> For to be carnally minded is death. If Yaakov, when he wrestled the angel, did not submit to the angel, he would have died. But to be spiritually minded is life and shalom. He said... I'm not going to let go until you bless me. That's what he told the angel. That was spiritual. He learned, I can't overcome this angel. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. The carnal mind. He was afraid. Fear. Fear is a carnal thing. Unless it's just the fear of Yah. But fear, and other than the fear of Yah, is the absence of faith. 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 You're only afraid when you don't have faith, which means that's carnally minded. He was afraid because Esau was coming with his army to kill his family. Go ahead. So he was carnally minded. Uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim, for it is not subject to the Torah of Elohim, neither indeed can be. Well, maybe I should run. Well, maybe I should split my family up. Uh, maybe I'll send them a gift. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. Until you realize you can't do anything but submit to Yah. What you need to do is submit and then let Yah lead you and show you what to do. Go ahead. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Elohim. So oftentimes when you read in scripture, it refers to the nation of Israel as Yahakob, as Jacob. And to me that represents our people in a carnal state. Mm -hmm. And when it says Israel, that indicates more of us in our spiritual state. I hope that answers the question. All right. Okay. That's it. Wow. We'll have one more? Okay. Okay. Um, what are the steps? Who's this? Oh, I'm sorry. Sister Vanessa White asks. Shalom, shalom. What are the steps to sign up for immersion again? All right, again, family. So um, if you are interested in the um, Breaking Soul Ties and Immersion Weekend, that's going to be August the 19th through the 22nd, you can email us. And I didn't tell you guys this earlier, so I'm glad for the question. You can email us at kayashua at gmail.com. Inside of your email, please include how many plan to attend. Go ahead and download um, Google Meets to your phones because here in the near future, we will be reaching out um, yeah, to you all. Week. Yeah, will in next week. And um, we will have um, Google Meet calls with everyone so that we can meet you all. You can meet us. We can talk. We can get to know each other prior to coming uh, for the event because there are some things that Jediah has planned that um, everyone needs to have already done and ready, prepared for the event to be successful and to be smooth. Oh, so again, email us at kayashua at gmail.com if you are interested in participating in the Breaking Soul Ties and Immersion Weekend family, this event is going to be phenomenal. Um, Y'all willing, we're going to, um, through the Ruach and the Most High Yehoah and Yehoshua, we'll be able to help some people overcome some things um, that they've probably been dealing with for most of their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for joining us this Shabbat day. We pray the Most High blesses you and keeps you in this new week and that he gives you uh, great shalom. Till next time, we'll hit y'all over. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.